Holland, not watching the board, oh. Kathy. I'd have gone to Tina Turner to block, yeah. but this may work out. According to the author of Aesop's Fables, what is a greater blessing in life than having many children? I'll say having many sports shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Greater, this what is, is sort of sparty, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what is a greater blessing in life than having many children? Greater blessing in life than having many children. I, I would say having a great provider for those children. Kathy? I'll disagree. No, having a few good ones. That does make sense. <laughs> right. Okay, you've got the block. Amelia, Paul, it's recorded. It is recorded that in ancient Athens, people relied mainly on one famous person for teaching sex education. What was he called? What was that masked man? I, uh... <laughs> Ancient Athens. I, uh, I didn't get his name. I wanted to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry I stepped on that. Excuse me. That's all right. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm floundering. Yeah. <laughs> but it's recorded that in ancient Athens, people relied mainly on one famous person for teaching sex, sex education. Who was it? One famous person. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Sure. Sex education. Not, not to mythology. No, no. Oh, ancient Athens. Ancient Athens. Oh, boy. Ask a Greek. <laughs> uh, Amelia, not Greek. Uh, you, do you no, want this question? No. All right. It was Aristotle, Paul. Oh. Aristotle. Back to a Paul in question. According to surveys in the Daily Breeze, what is the most common topic of gossip among young women? Do you understand the question? What is the most common topic of gossip among young women? Well, last week it was the rumor about Wilt Chamberlain and Olga Corbett. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is the most common topic of gossip among young women? Uh, who the other one's going with? Who the other one's going with? I disagree. A uh, pregnancy. <laughs> Let's put an X there. Kathy, it's your turn. How Say, Paul, uh, true or false, New York City produces about 25 tons of waste material every single day. New York City. You hear that, dog lovers? <laughs> How many tons? 25 tons? Oh, easily. Easily. Kathy? It sounds disgusting enough to be true. It is disgusting enough to be true. Yeah, you've got the circle. Amelia Turn. Luck, pick a star. Thank you. Since my name is Paula, I've got to go with Paul Lind. All right. Paul, uh, was Snow White a blonde or a brunette? Snow White, was she a blonde or a brunette? Only Walt Disney knew for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember a very, very brunette. Brunette. Yes, I agree. Absolutely. Good start. Okay, Sam, your turn. Lynn. All righty. Paul for $500. True or false? They use cow's horns to make ice cream. You mean those weren't chocolate chips? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, I'm to you. I, 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 there's so much preservatives in ice cream. You know, you cannot melt ice cream in your, with water running on it. There's that many, I would say uh, probably true. I agree. Uh, gelatin is made from the horns, which is then used to make the ice cream. 500 bucks, Sam D'Angelo. Congratulations. For $500 in the tie game, true or false, every day, about 10 million American women take the pill. And I can name them all. <laughs> But do 10 million American women take that pill? Yes. Yes, oh yes. And you know something? 50 million worldwide. We have a tie game. That's good. Circle gets the square. <laughs> True or false, research indicates that Christopher Columbus liked to wear bloomers and long stockings. Well, it's not easy to sign a crew up for six months. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Did old Chris like to wear bloomers? And... Yes, I, he always had them on when I saw his picture. Paula? Oh, yes, I agree. Sure, a lot of guys did then. <laughs> All right, with the circles, eh? Hey? Paul, Paul, when little Frank Sinatra was brought into the world on December 12th, <clears throat> 1915, the doctor couldn't help noticing that there was something unusual about the new baby. What was it? He did it his way. <laughs> uh, there was something unusual about Frank Sinatra when he was born. What was it? Junior. No, uh, senior. Something unusual. Uh, Obviously, Paul doesn't have I a have no for this. Idea. Would you like the question, Miriam? I don't know. Uh, yes, he was quite large. He weighed 13 and a half pounds, to be exact. We'll go back to a Paul Lynn question right now, so listen carefully. True or false? A man, a man once pulled two railroad cars weighing 80 tons by his teeth. <laughs> He's now in the Red Cap Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> Has a man ever pulled two railroad cars weighing 80 tons by his teeth? Well, if, you know, once you get them rolling, oh. <laughs> you better move. I, uh, I think yes. I'll agree. Yes, we have a commercial. Put a circle right there. We'll be back. Sonny Bono. Sonny Bono sadly admitted recently that although he's been looking, he'll never find another. Another what? Job. <laughs> No, he has a fantastic sense of humor, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does. Uh, You'll never find another what? Well, I tell you, the, uh, I read the um, article in Time, and it was most flattering what he said of Cher. I, I would say another share. I agree. Right. Two X's. Okay, Miriam, your turn. You're welcome. Jim Square. All right, Dave, you'll start this game. Pick a star. Paul Lynn. Paul, according to Rona Barrett, Rona Barrett, Cher. Cher says that when she's 80, hers will be down to her hips. Her what? Her halter tops. <laughs> when Cher is 80, hers will be down to her hips. Her what? Well, I'll, I'll go. She, she loves long hair, obviously. Hair. I'll, I'll agree. Right. Yeah, you got the edge. Okay, Sarah. George Gilbert. Sarah, you start this game here. Pick a star. Oh, uh, Poland. Say, Paul, Gerald Ford says the truth, truth is the glue that holds governments together. What does he say is the oil that makes governments go? Whatever they fry tacos in. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> uh, truth is the glue that holds governments together. What does he say is the oil that makes governments go? Truth. Oil. Uh, truth keeps them together. And yeah. What makes governments go? Uh, well, dishonesty. <laughs> dishonesty. Sarah? No, I disagree. No, compromise. Compromise. With a circle, Dave, you're Well, turn. that's... I think I'll go with... Uh... Pauline. All right, for $250, true or false, there is a new birth control dog food on the market. Yes, it's good for girls on a budget. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, a birth control, a new birth control dog food on the market, true or false? Boy, that would be great if it were true. I would stop the overpopulation of the dogs, too. I'll say true. I agree. That's a good thing. That's true. And Circle gets the square. Whoa. Paul, for $500, from what animal do you get your silk blouses? From what animal do you get your silk blouses? An animal to you, Peter, but kind and generous to me. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
What animal do you get? Yeah. In other words, where do we get silk from? Oh, from silkworms. From silkworms. I agree. Yeah, caterpillars. Uh, they're called silkworms, right? But they are little caterpillars. <laughs> All right, you've got yourself five hundred dollars. Paul, you you have a bunch of unwanted hair. According to Dr. Thustison, what is most often the cause of unwanted hair? A bunch of it. Um, uh, running over a llama. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of unwanted hair. What's usually the cause of it? Uh, the, the most often cause, yeah. Uh, I, I would say uh, hormones. Hormones. I'll agree. Uh, no. Uh, heredity? Wouldn't hormones be? No, we can't. No. Uh, all right. I uh, can't put a circle there. Lydia, you'll have to net yourself. Tina Paul, Lawrence Welk says that as a teenager, he promised his father he'd work hard on their farm for four years if his daddy would loan him the money to buy something few boys ever get. What? Oh, a champagne lady. <laughs> he promised his dad he'd work hard if his dad would loan him the money to buy something. That few boys get. Yeah. Uh, I would say an accordion. An accordion. I'll agree. That's how it all started. His first real accordion. Look at that. Okay, Linda. Go right ahead, dear. Pick a star. Oh, I'll take handsome Paul Lind. Handsome Paul for $250. Uh, your date has had a great shock and then fainted. According to experts, you should loosen her clothing and then do one other thing. What? <laughs> do you understand the question? Yes. Uh, your date's had a great shock. Now, she's fainted. According to, to experts, you should loosen her clothing and then do one other thing. What? Uh, send a, a postcard uh, requesting an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> You don't get along with this young lady, obviously. No, no, she's fainted. Now you've you've loosened the clothing. Now what do you do? She's fainted from shock. Uh, I guess it could be a guy too. Whatever happens, mm. man or woman, they faint, shock, loosen clothing, and then. Uh, so you don't do mouth to mouth resuscitation, fainting. I, I would call a doctor. After Just I've call a doctor. After don't I've do anything else. Call a doctor. Um, I disagree. No, you raise the legs, keep them elevated, and we have $250 for Rebecca Rounds. <laughs> Who determines the sex of a child? Who determines the sex of a child? The father or the mother? I say let the child make up its own mind. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Who determines? I think, uh... <laughs> The mother's genes. The mother. I disagree. Uh, the father, for he has chromosomes for both boys and girls. Yeah, for the single there. That is your turn. Yes, Robert. Yes. Paul, uh, your rooster has been fixed so that he no longer has romantic interest in hens. What is the proper word for him now? Suicidal. <laughs> Um, You've got a fixed rooster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is the proper word for a rooster that has been altered? Uh, capon. Capon. I agree. As those capons go rolling along. Yeah, with it, circle down and George go. Paul, uh, true or false, there's a town in Italy where all the people who live there are bald. How in the world can you tell the men from the women? <laughs> uh, they're all bald? Yeah, there's a town in Italy where all the people who live there are bald. True or false? <clears throat> uh, <laughs> damn. It's so absurd. Uh, it's either a, uh, I don't know, it wasn't some kind of punishment. Bald. Uh, oh, true. True. I agree. It's the town of A-Z-Z-O-N-E. Azone? I guess we have a commercial. You got an X there. We'll be back. Paul, you're going around with a girl who wants to know all about your past romantic experiences. According to Playboy, should you tell her about them? I don't think I'll tell her about the Indian guide. <laughs> <laughs> or the Thousand Island dressing. <laughs> should you tell her? About your past experiences, romantic experiences. I, uh... <clears throat> It, 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 if she hasn't asked, um, even if she asks, is it? 
I, I don't think it's, um, I wouldn't. He said, no, you shouldn't. I disagree. You shouldn't. Those are your business, uh, th th those are your business alone? <laughs> is that right? Is that our business? Yes. It is our business. Uh, put us earlier. Derry, a break for you. We find the tie-breaking question. I've got it here somewhere. Here it is. All right, for the tie and the car. The tiebreaker and the car. Uh, was the opera Rigoletto composed by Verdi, Puccini, or Rossini? I'll repeat the question. Was the opera, opera Rigoletto composed by Verdi, Puccini, or Rossini? <clears throat> I know it's not Puccini, it's either Rossini or Verdi. Uh, we have uh, Verdi or Rossini, yeah, uh, if you say it's not Puccini. Uh, Rossini. Rossini. I agree. Verdi. X gets the square. Oh, Congrats. Circles all over the place, you can really gamble here now. Paul End. Paul, according to the book, what every patient wants to know, are there exercises you can do to prevent your bosoms from sagging? Exercises. Uh, yes, but it requires um, uh, pierced ears and uh, and some kite strength. <laughs> What are we going to do with you, Paul? Are there exercises you can't do to prevent your bosom from sagging, yes or no? I, you know, we've had so many questions on the bosom about what, changing or can't. I don't think you can change it much, but I think you can do this. I, I, yeah. I will agree with that. No, you can't. Oh. No, you can't. Uh, you can develop, I think, the pectoral, but that, that's a whole, that's another show in itself. Uh, for the next there, Dave, it's your turn. Sure. Paul, originally Mac. Mac, before your name, meant son of, son of. What did O before your name mean? Is that O or O? <laughs> no, that's O. <laughs> Mac meant uh, son of. O meant? Uh, and Mac is Scottish. Uh, o, I would say in... Um... In America, it would be the same. Son the same. Of. Son of. I agree. No, grandson of. Oh, no. Yeah, put a circle there. Okay, Suzanne. Paul. Paul, true or false? It only takes a good chicken plucking machine 14 seconds to strip a chicken bare. Oh. I used to do that. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I guess you can. I agree. That is true. Yep, you got an X there. All right, Suzanne, your turn. Go right ahead. Thank you. Paul Lynn. Paul, true or false, according to the Bible, you, you, Paul Lynn, you are a sinner. As long as they spelled my name right. <laughs> <laughs> but according to the Bible, are you a sinner? Yes. I agree. We're all sinners. Yes, for all have sinned. Romans 3, 23. You've got the X. Bertha, your turn, dear. All righty, for a tie game, a history tells us that Paul Revere only had 35 cents in his pocket when he made the famous ride. What was he planning to, to use it for? <laughs> well, in those days, uh, a Milky Way and a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty-five cents, that's all he had in his pocket. He was planning to use that thirty-five cents for something. What? Uh, probably, um, thirty-five, uh, probably a, a little snack. I mean, something to eat. Bertha? I'll agree. When he got to Lexington, he wanted to have dinner. Thirty. He could have had an eight-sportsman, but that's good. We got a tie Paul Lynn. Say, Paul, according to experts at the Indianapolis Star, <laughs> is it a good idea rather a good idea for mailmen who are often bothered by dogs is to keep something with them while they do their job. Keep what with them? Um, cocker spaniel and heat. <laughs> uh. Mailmen, they're being bothered by dogs. Now, they should keep something with them while they do their job. Keep what with them? Well, I know they're allowed to um, carry mace which, you know, you can wash out of a dog's eyes or, or if it harms it. Uh, I, uh, it, it probably isn't the answer, but I, I, I would say mace. Mace. 
Disagree. Uh, you know what it is? Dog biscuits. Hey, that does make sense. Dog biscuits. Why not? Okay, Bertha. Uh, George. Sure, Paul. Paul, there is a company that will rent you a nude bartender for your party. <laughs> Set him up, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the routine. Uh, yes, yes, there definitely is. I agree. Yep, that's true. You've got the X. Kay Ingram, your turn, dear. Paul in. Paul, true or false, Zsa, Zsa Gabor is a deputy sheriff in Chicago. What a pity she couldn't make it in show business. <laughs> Is Jaja a deputy sheriff in Chicago? I'm a, I'm a deputy sheriff in several towns. They make your honorary ones, I believe, yes. I'll, I'll agree. Yeah, by the Cook County Sheriff. Yeah, you've got it with an X. All right, Kay, your turn. Paul, what is America's principal big game animal? Let me repeat the question. What is America's principal big game animal? Ah, uh, big game. <clears throat> big game animal. I would say, uh, well, uh, <coughs> I don't think you're allowed to kill moose. Uh, that's the... Uh, I just, I don't, <clears throat> I don't shoot, so I, I have no idea. I'll offer the question to Kate. <clears throat> no, thank you. Uh, the deer. Oh, yeah, okay. this is according to the World Book. Back to a Pauline question. Liberace, Liberace, he's a lovely guy. He really is a terrific person, great entertainer. He has a new book out, Liberace has, called The Things I... Oh, put in my hair. <laughs> 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 Liberace's new book is called The Things I... The Things I... Uh... <laughs> I know what he's <laughs> The Things I uh, Do For You. Uh, the Things I Do For You, okay? I disagree. The uh, Things I Love. It's a book of photos of his art treasures. You've got the circle and Steve. It's your turn. Say, Paul... Uh, when is it a good idea to put your pantyhose in the microwave oven for about two minutes? When your house is surrounded by the police. <laughs> when, when is it a good idea to put your pantyhose in the microwave oven for about two minutes? I, I, uh, I would imagine when they're wet. When they're wet. I agree. You know, if you do it for about two minutes, it, it's a good way to dry them after they've been washed. Uh, sure, you've got the circle and that is your turn. All right. Not the secret square, but a tie game, 250 bucks. What was it that made nice Mr. Jekyll turn into the mean Mr. Hyde? Mm. Uh, tweed uh, pajama bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> What was it that made nice Mr. Jekyll turn into that old, mean Mr. Hyde? Well, a, a potion that he concocted. He I agree. Drinks it. That's exactly right. You've got yourself $250. Paul Lind? Uh, do we know, Paul, do we know of anyone who ate over 1,200 baked beans in a half hour? That may explain what happened to Amelia Earhart. <laughs> Do we know of anyone, yes or no, who ate over 1,200 baked beans in a half hour? Oh, sure. Uh, I'll agree. Oh, sure, yes. You've got the circle. Carl, keep the square. Carl David. You want Paul? All right. Uh, Paul, in the Bible, King David asked beautiful and wise Abigail to do something after her first husband died. What? Get him out of the room. <laughs> King David asked beautiful and wise Abigail to do something after her first husband died. What? Uh, 
But to marry him. To marry I him. Agree. Right, and she did. We're the next, Sydney. Uh, there will be a film out in the future, Paul, called The Greatest. The Greatest. Who is it about? Hmm. Uh, about someone the greatest or the... No, there will be a film. Out soon. Well, what time is it now? Uh, <laughs> in the future. It will be called The Greatest. Uh, we want to know who it's about. Oh. Uh, Merle Oberon or... Uh, <laughs> or King Kong. <laughs> I'll say... I'll say, uh, that's the publicity they're using. I'll say King Kong. King Kong. I disagree. Uh, that's already out. Uh, what is it? Oh, it, it is. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, based on the biography of the same name, the greatest. Yeah, Muhammad Ali with a circle. In fact, earn for the car, clear the board. And Carl, uh, pick a star. Paul Lynn. Paul, when asked to explain something, Albert Einstein said, be with a nice girl for two hours, and it seems like a minute. Sit on a hot stove for a minute, and it seems like two hours. What was he trying to explain? Why he bought a tube of ungantine for his secretary. <laughs> uh. Einstein trying to explain something. Be with a nice girl for two hours, it seems, it seems like a minute. Sit on a hot stove for a minute, it seems like two hours. He was trying to explain what? Uh, when, when something is pleasant, it... Uh, when something is pleasant. It, I disagree. It's relativity. Yeah, his theory of relativity. Good for you. And we got an X there. And now we're going to add up this... Call in. True or false, Paul? The traditional champagne glass is modeled after Maria Antoinette's bosom. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Karen to thank for the <laughs> shot glass. <laughs> True or false? Marie Antoinette's yes, bosom. Right. A champagne glass model. Well, now uh, champagne's French. That's for, uh, I. I would say uh, that could be a possibility. Yes. So, yes, yeah, true. I agree. That is true. All righty, with a circle, Jerry, you turn. Paul, you've got a secret. According to psychologists, if you're average, if you're average, will you probably tell it to a man or to a woman? If I tell it to a man, he might hit me. Let's see. How <laughs> uh, secret. Uh, I think I, I've always told my secrets to women. Women. I agree. Do you know that women are confided in more than men? Yeah, that is true. All right, with the next. My Paul, true or false? Many of our highways and railroads were built directly, directly on the trails left by the bison. So that's why the roads are so bumpy. <laughs> uh, they would probably go the most direct route. Yeah, I think they would be. A... That's true. I'll agree. Absolutely true. Right. And then, uh, second, Malcolm. Waddle well, in. All righty. Paul, has a court, has a court ever awarded a woman half a million dollars because her husband was no longer able to keep her romantically satisfied? All the jury had to see was Exhibit A. <laughs> but has the court ever awarded a woman half a million dollars because her husband was no longer able to keep her romantically satisfied? Yes or no? Yes. I agree. It happened recently here and where else? California. Okay. We're the next. Beverly? Paul, true or false? There are no cemeteries in Miami Beach. Now they just seal up the door of your condominium. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're rich, they'll leave a maid in there with you. <laughs> <laughs> and then what happened? Uh, you know, it's, I've been in Miami many times and that's true I've never seen us he said there are no cemeteries in Miami Beach I'll agree there are no cemeteries in Miami Beach for the circle okay Malcolm I was right but 
Uh, Paul Lee, please. Paul, uh, Paul, true or false? In an experiment, a scientist has made one monkey smile over 300,000 times. And not once did he have to say, I love you. <laughs> uh, a scientist has made one monkey smile over 300,000 times. True or false? 300,000. I mean, that's just smiling all the time. I'll say true. I'll agree. I think they were reruns of the gong show. Yeah. Okay, let's put an extra. Denise, your turn. Here's burger. Can I start? Yeah, I'd like to start with Paul Lynn, please. That's the secret square with Paul Lynn. That's been, uh, I don't think Paul's been a secret square for a long, long time. $2,400, Paul. The famous song, The Man That Got Away, was heard in the classic film, The Man That Got Away. Was it the man, it, was it from The Man Who Knew Too Much, A Star Is Born, or The Man That Got Away? A Star Is Born. A Star Is Born. I disagree. Yeah, 1954, starring Judy Garland. Yeah, Harold Arlen, I believe, wrote it. And <laughs> let's uh, put a circle there. We'll have another secret square game after this one. The author of uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, I think, uh, yes, Harper Lee is a woman. Uh, but now it's MJ's turn. Okay, Paul Lynn, please. Uh, there's a plaque on the moon left there during man's first landing. It's signed by four men. Four, Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, Edward Aldrin, and who else? Uh, Randolph Scott. <laughs> <laughs> a plaque signed by four men. Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, Edwin Aldrin, and who else? Oh, I'm going to show my stupidity, so I won't. I, I have no idea. Oh, would you like to question him, Jay? No, I'll pass on uh, that. Richard one. Nixon. Back to a Paul in question. According to experts in the Arkansas Gazette, the Arkansas Gazette, what is the main cause of nail biting? What else goes good with goat's milk? <laughs> um, the main cause of nail biting? Uh, nerves. Nerves. I agree. Yeah, tension, anxiety. It's all right with another ex. Denise, your turn, dear. Pick a star. Oh. You said it right on the buzzer. Did he say it right on the buzzer? It's worth yeah. $50 for MJ or maybe $50 for Denise. Paul, in what literary classic will you read about a sad, middle-aged man named Leopold Bloom? Uncle Tom's condominium. <laughs> uh, let's see. A sad middle-aged man named Leopold Bloom. A literary classic. Uh, the pawnbroker. The pawnbroker. I disagree. Uh, by James Joyce. Ulysses. Yep. He knew it. You got your ex. Now we're going to add up the scores. It's been a. All right. I'll take Paul Lynn to win. For two hundred and fifty dollars, true or false, a giant tortoise at a Seattle Jew. Uh, Jew. Are you ready for that? <laughs> Maybe the best one I've done. This will be in the outtakes, and <laughs> this will be in outtakes in Las Vegas, friends. All right, a giant tortoise is a, at a Seattle zoo. <laughs> Recently slipped while mating, broke its leg, and is now strapped to a skateboard so it can make it around the zoo. Make it around. Is that true or false? That same thing happened to Grandpa Walton. <laughs> So I would say, uh, I would say, uh, that's probably true. Tortoise. Uh, I, I agree. You bought a tortoise to a skateboard? He yes. said that's, it's yes. true. Yeah. Oh, a uh, circle gets the square. <laughs> Paul, listen carefully. Stand up straight. Raise your knee as high as possible. <laughs> then grab the leg and pull it against your body. Now do it to the other leg. According to the L.A. Herald Examiner, what's that supposed to help? Uh, loneliness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Stand up straight. Raise your knee as high as possible. Grab the leg, pull it against the body. Now do it to the other leg. What is that supposed to help? Well, it would certainly help, uh, and probably it isn't the right answer, but it would certainly uh, speed up your circulation. Circulation. I agree. That's exactly what it does. Very good. You've got the X, and when it's your turn. Paul, according to the famous story, who did Narcissus eventually fall in love with? <laughs> well, for a while he was married to Carol Lawrence. Uh, <laughs> If you're watching, Bob. <laughs> but who did Narcissus eventually fall in love with? Oh, well, himself. Himself. Naturally. I agree. Of course, yeah. You've got the circle. Carl, your turn. According to UPI, America's young couples are moving toward the decision to quit after two. To what? Two times. <laughs> Now, if uh, I were... Could you explain that a little more? <laughs> oh, I guess it is night time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, according to UPI, yes, America's young couples yes. are moving toward the decision to quit after yeah, two. If there's any movement that I would be for, which I think is causing all our miseries today, is, is over too many people and uh, two children. Is... I agree. Uh, more and more young couples are restricting the size of their families. With another X and Hazel, your turn. Block, Betty. Started by Ray Fuchs. Uh, Paul Lynn, please. The 16th Amendment has always been fairly unpopular from the time it was ratified in 1913, until this very day, in fact. What does it do, the 16th Amendment? Uh, free the slaves. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. You disagree? <laughs> it's... Uh, I don't blame you. No, it provides for the income tax, Paul. That's the income tax. For the next there, Hazel, your turn. <laughs> Round with Hazel. With Paul Lynn. Tarzan was one of our, uh, of our earliest swingers. Hey, <laughs> that's cute. I like the way that's that was written. Awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Tarzan was one of our earliest swingers. Did he ever actually marry Jane? Well, if he didn't, you know what that makes, boy. <laughs> uh, a free soul, Paul. <laughs> yes, that's right, free soul. But did uh, we call it something else when I was a kid? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, did I, did did boy crash too on a plane? I don't know. Uh, I think uh, I think they actually did get married. Yes, they got married. Hazel. I agree. Uh, it was in the book The Return of Tarzan in 1915. Yes, they'll be celebrating their anniversary soon. Hey, happy anniversary, Tarzan, Jane. Uh, Ray? And to start this round, Ray. Paul Lynn, please. Uh, Paul, a nationwide survey of personnel directors was recently taken. And they were asked if they would hire a girl who showed up for an interview in a see-through blouse. What did most of them say? Bring her in. <laughs> No, I'm looking for yes or no is what I'm looking for. Well, if they wanted a lot of work done and he's a good businessman, I'm sure he said no. I'll agree. 97% said no. wonder who those 3% were. I don't know. What are they? <laughs> Paul Lind recently stated, if there is anything helpful, uh, helpful for other actors to be drawn from my experience, I think it is this. Don't try to fake what? Anything. <laughs> But according to Paul, what is it? Anything? Don't try. I think Paul would say, don't try to fake. Um, I, I, I want to go for honesty because he's, you know, in his. He's very honest in a lot of the things he says. So I, honesty. Honesty. I disagree. Uh, that's just about it, Karen. We really can't accept that. But it, it, Paul said, don't try to fake youth. After reaching the after 30 group, uh, you know, relax and live with it. Is that right, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> That's all dressed like a kid. Kelly right? <laughs> Maxwell. I'll take Paul in. True or false? Anne Margaret reached 30 this year. 
Just when she inhales. <laughs> <laughs> Reach 30 this year. Uh, let's see. I can figure that out because I did bye bye birdie with her and I knew all she was then. Take your time. Yes, yes, she would be. I disagree. Yes, true. Turn about fair play with the next. Joe? Fidel Castro is often seen around Cuba with something Nikita Khrushchev gave him. What is it? The heartbreak of psoriasis. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, a medal on his khakis that, uh, that Khrushchev was the only decoration he ever wore on his. A medal. I agree. No. A limousine. And uh, Paul's good at this game. We can't put an X there, Joe. You'll have to earn that yourself. I'll go to Paul Landon. For $750, Paul, police departments in some large cities are telling their officers not to do two particular things to a person's home. They're not supposed to lounge around or do one other thing. What is it? Uh, give change for 100 <laughs> They're not supposed to lounge around or do one other thing. What is that? Not lounge around. Mm -hmm. And one other thing. <laughs> and one other thing. Uh, I think they can no longer uh, hold you without a uh, formal arrest. They cannot ask to search you. I'll disagree with no, that. Smoke. Smoke. Uh, $750 for Joe Brown. <laughs> Nancy Wilson to block. Paul Lind. Paul Lind once weighed more than 200 pounds. True or false? Hmm. Paul? 200. Um, mm. I don't think so, no. She said it's false. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. Well, while, he was, while he was studying at Northwestern University, and after that meal we had this evening, yes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you have a circle there, and uh, Mike, it's your turn. Go right ahead. You really weighed over 200 pounds, Oh, right, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, right after Trigger died, Paul, right after Trigger died, what did Roy Rogers announce he would do? Dismount. <laughs> uh, Your trigger died. Yeah, Roy uh, Rogers announced he would do something. <clears throat> was champion before or after Trigger? Let's see. Uh, I think that was uh, Gene Autry. Oh, Gene Autry. Oh, yes. Yeah. Trigger's down at Apple Valley. <laughs> stuffed. He really stuffed. Is. Yes. Uh, he, he was going to have him stuffed. <laughs> I disagree. Yes. Uh, have Paul or... <laughs> I don't know with what, but that's it, yes. yes. And we have a circle there, and uh, Josie, your turn. Paul Lind. Our President Nixon recently told Time Magazine that he doesn't have something in the bedrooms of any of the places he lives. What doesn't he have in the bedroom? Fun. <laughs> 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 uh, he doesn't have any <laughs> in any of the bedrooms he doesn't have something in any of the bedrooms of the places he lives what doesn't uh, the president have uh, probably um, uh, probably a TV set television he doesn't have it in there he doesn't have doesn't any television in any of the bedrooms I'll agree with you'll Paul buy that yes. he's absolutely correct yes for the circle Michael oh. Cuban leader Castro often sends Yugoslavian President Tito a gift. What is it? Um, a cheap hand-painted tie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they really love each other. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would say that he would probably send him uh, cigars. True. You will agree. Is that what you said, dear? Yes, those famous Havana cigars. With a circle. Good start, Anna. So, vertical lift, suspension, and truss are all kinds. Kinds of what? 
uh, shorts. <laughs> Vertical lift. Suspension and truss are, uh, are, are all kinds. Kinds of what? Uh, bridges. Bridges. I agree. Bridges with a circle. And Arnold, the Soviet Union doesn't have something in its Navy that ours has had for decades. What? Commander Glenn Ford. <laughs> <laughs> but the Soviet Union doesn't have something in its Navy that ours has had for decades. Captain what is it? Glenn Ford. <laughs> uh, there's something in the... Uh, the Russian Navy, uh, they, they, we have something that the Russian Navy does not have. Uh, um, something that they don't uh, I will say uh, that we have the WAFs. No, uh, what is, no, that isn't, what, wasps, wasps. That is right. Which is the women's. Wait. I agree. No, uh, I tell you what, they, have, they also have ladies in the Navy over there too, Paul. Yes, aircraft carriers. They are reportedly building uh, their very first one. And we have a break for Arnold there with the next, and your turn. Brown with Arnold. Uh, Paul. According to Dear Abby, how does a respectable man keep from falling in love with his neighbor's wife? By uh, looking at his neighbor's gun collection. <laughs> uh, that's one way. Yeah. How does a respectful man keep from falling in love with his neighbor's wife? This is according to Dear Abby. Uh, by, keep, uh, by keeping his eye on his own life. I agree. We can accept that, yes, by keeping away, by keeping a respectable distance from her, staying with his wife and not... Jen. Paul Lynn. Okay. Uh, before, before he retired, Paul, Frank Sinatra stated, I said it before and I'll say it again. Blank is the greatest singer in the world. Who is it? Uh, Vic Damone. Oh, just one word? Yes, another word. Yeah, no, that, oh, you, Vic okay. Damone. Okay. I agree. Tony Bennett. Put an X there. Oh, Arnold, look at the Um, Paul Lynn. Oh, is he your favorite? Yes. Yeah. Might <laughs> be. The Guinness Book, the Guinness Book of World Records, Paul, tells us where the deepest man-made hole in the world is. What's it used for? The twenty-nine ninety-five special at Forest Lawn. <laughs> It's the deepest man-made hole in the entire world. What is it used for? The well. Uh, I I would say maybe to um, store uh, radioactive material. Marion. I agree. No, it's a gas well. It's in Oklahoma, mm. and it's over thirty thousand feet deep. Mm. Put an X there, Greg. Go ahead there. Uh, Paul Lynn. Oh, I would have gone to Susie Plachette the block. This may oh, work out. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Who is Gerald Ford's? Who is Gerald Ford's own admitted hero? Oh, Fred McMurray. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> own admitted hero. Gerald Ford's, his hero. <laughs> Uh, 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 I would say, um, uh, obviously Paul does not have a bluff in his Marion, would you like the question? No, I like another one. You'd like another one? I, I don't blame him. He's one of mine, too. Harry Truman. Uh, yes, back to a Paul Lynn question here, true or false? The founder, the founder of the Girl Scouts of America was actually a man. Well, fortunately, he was arrested at a cookout. <laughs> uh, the founder of the Girl Scouts was actually a man. Well, I think they consider the, uh, you know, the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts practically the same. So I'll say uh, true. Mary? I agree. No. The founder of the Girl Scouts of America was named Juliet Lowe. Okay, we're the next. Several ways to play this, Greg. Call in. Paul, first they're hand-picked and bathed. Then they go to a pulping house 
and go through fermenting and washing tanks. Then they're hauled, peeled, and roasted. What are they? Contestants. <laughs> They both agree. What is that? <laughs> but first they're hand-picked and bathed. Then they go to a pulping house and go through fermenting and washing tanks. Then they're hauled, peeled, and roasted. What are they? Peeled and roasted. I will say coffee beans. Coffee beans. I agree. Coffee beans. <laughs> Put a circle there. Good. I'll go with George Bush. <laughs> Classic Hollywood Squares, weeknights at 8.30 Eastern. What are you laughing at? Oh, Which star is it? Tom DeLuise. Karen Valentine. Vincent Price. Suzanne Bichette. Burt Reynolds, Carl Reiner, Wally Cox, Hope Lang, or Paul Lynn, all in the Hollywood Square. And here is the master of the Hollywood Squares, Peter Marshall. Thank you, Kenny, and a very good evening. Welcome to the Hollywood Square. Hello, stars. Happy Happy Welcome once again, everyone. Welcome. Opponents of fluoridated water argued that too much fluorine in a person's system can cause an uncontrollable desire for sex. Hey, call like a man! Paul Lynn. Put Paul in. He's breaking up already. Say, in literature, <laughs> what is it that writes and having writ moves on? A meter maid. <laughs> <laughs> the hand of fate. Uh, I'll disagree. The Why? moving finger. <laughs> you disagree. Put an X there. Secret Square, around the world. Pontiac Firebird. Where is it? Oh, that's Mr. Funny. Paul Lind, please. To Paul Lind. What should you call the group of dancers in a ballet? <laughs> <laughs> Silly savages. <laughs> Corps de ballet. Corps de ballet. That's right. That's that, correct. Yes, that's, that's right. That's, that's right. Yes. I put a circle there. Okay, back. Uh, <laughs> yes, I think um, Paul in the block. In what state was Abraham Lincoln born? In what state? Mm -hmm. well, like all of us, naked and screaming. <laughs> 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 Paul, you got a 43 on the laugh meter. That means you win the trip around the world. Uh, uh, <laughs> Illinois. I agree. Kentucky. X does not get the square, but give you three in a row. The third one you must earn yourself. Several ways to win it. Take a look. I didn't know that. Paul Lynn to win. All right. Why was Daniel thrown into the den of lions? Or jaywalking in Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been working at Metro. <laughs> For trying to overthrow Herod. I disagree with you. Because he refused to worship pagan gods, X gets the square $300 for Chuck Boyle. That's that square. Judy, you're looking for um, a $300. Yes, I am. Paul Lynn. All righty. <laughs> the famous short story, The Gold Bug, was written by what famous author? It's got to be Charles de Gaulle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the scary guy, Edgar Allan Poe. I'll disagree. He's right. X oh. gets the square. Oh. Break for you, Chuck. 
Uh, Connie Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> Who played Anne Margaret's father in the film Bye Bye Birdie? Oh, dear. I remember him very well. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> that laugh? Uh, yes, uh, I disagree. You know who it was? Take a guess. Not Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Good. It was uh, Paul uh, Lynn. Uh, oh, oh, yes. <laughs> Paul also starred in the Broadway production with uh, Dick Van Dyke, Sheeta Rivera, Dick Godier. And Margaret's mother? Uh, father! <laughs> Abby, I'm gonna... Abby Dalton! <laughs> can't take you any place. All right, uh, Judy. Uh. Paul, if you put chunks of onions, uh, tomatoes, peppers, and lamb all together on a long stick, what would you call it? I heard that, but it's on Marsha Reef. <laughs> 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 You would have Omar Sharif. Oh, well done. Can I hear the ingredients again. Don't help me. Yes. Onions, tomatoes or tomatoes, uh, wherever you're from. Peppers, lamb all together on a long stick. What would you call it? A shish kebab. I agree with you. A shish kebab. Circle gets to the honest pass in the audience. Not to uh, yell out the answers here. Call in the block. You're standing on your big gun and hanging five while you look for a dumper. What are you up to? <laughs> <laughs> Go. Uh, I, th I think that's that killer sport surfing, I think. You're correct. <laughs> it's I'll a killer sport. Yeah, sport the hit circle right there. <laughs> Joey Bishop. Joey Bishop. Uh, <laughs> Paul Lynn. All righty. Paul, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle all lived in what city? Um, Athens. <laughs> I agree. Uh, X gets the square, and we'll be back with more of the Hollywood squares. That was all righty. How many men on a hockey team? About half. <laughs> and that's including the puck. <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, you, sir, have an X and $600. Very good. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I have to go to Paul in the block. Paul in the block from left to right. The staff of life has been with us for ages. What is the staff of life? <clears throat> Yogurt. <laughs> no, I... I... <laughs> I think it's uh, the staff of life is bread. I agree with you. He is correct. Put the circle there. Right. <laughs> Try and read it. Paul Lynn. Hi, Paul. Hi. The old childhood chant, when you sing Lady Bird, Lady Bird, fly away home, why should she go? Because Lyndon wants his chili. <laughs> I think that the house is on fire. I agree. He's right. For the next day. <laughs> so that's... Oh, Paul in the block from left to right. The newest best-selling album by this top star is entitled To Russell, My Brother, Whom I Slept With. Who's the recording star? Little baby Rosemary. Oh, <laughs> I no. never slept with my <laughs> I, I think that's uh, uh, Davy Jones, the one of the monkeys. I'm going to disagree. Bill Cosby. Put a circle there. She disagreed. <laughs> Good story. John? Bill Bixby. Who is required to be kind, obedient, cheerful, and clean? <laughs> Daddy Hutz. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> may I hear that again? Yeah. <laughs> Required to be kind, obedient, cheerful, and clean. Who is? 
uh, Boy Scouts. That's right, Reverend Thrifty, too. Plus helpful, brave, courteous, and loyal. You forgot those. Put a circle there. John? Thank you. You have to be blind. prepared. Call in, please. Paul? Uh, if you were a Knight of the Sun, a Grand Inspector, Inquisitor, Commander, or a Sovereign Grand Inspector General, to what organization would you belong? The Luxembourg National Guard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, um, I think, I think those strange fellows, the odd fellows. <laughs> I agree. The Mystic Knights of the Sea, the Masons, a marvelous organization. You agreed he was wrong. X gets the square. Charlie Weaver. Call in. If someone was dressed in soup and fish, what would they be wearing? <laughs> soup and fish. Friday supper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think that's a, 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 a weave like a herringbone. Um, I'll have to agree. White tie and tails. Put oh, on no. the top hat. X gets the square, Josh. Charlie Weaver again. Boy, that's fast. Oh. Uh, these flip the coin backstage, you'll start the game. Good luck to both of you and pick a star, Judy. I have a hunch. Mr. Paul Lynn, please. No, no. but we'll go to the Paul Lynn questions <laughs> here and find out. <laughs> if you were awarded a BEE -E at college, what would you specialize in? I'd be a honeymaker. <laughs> uh, I think I ought to be an economist, e economics. I disagree. Electrical engineering. Oh, well, I'm glad I wasn't there. <laughs> John? Let's try Lauren Green, all right? Finally, hasn't had a chance to play yet. Paul in has a chance to play right now, and this is for six hundred dollars. In the Mother Goose rhyme, Goosey Goosey Gander, the goose wandered into his lady's chamber where he met a man. What did the goose do to him? He peopled him. He manned him. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> now, Abby, control yourself. Or contain yourself. Would you, would you run that one? Somewhere? Sure. And the mother goose rhyme. I love to do beautiful phrases like this. Goosey, goosey gander, the goose wandered into his lady's chamber where he met a man. What did the goose do to him? Frightened him. I disagree. Why? <laughs> <laughs> he threw him down the stairs. $600, John Kemper. Very good. <laughs> Paul in to block. Paul in, so we'll go to the Paul in questions here and see what we come up with. What is the green, uh, the green eyed monster? Jealousy. Zha Zha, dear, I'm sorry, I have to destroy I am the so question. Sorry too. I know, well, that's all right, dear. Once in a while we blurt these things out. That does happen. We'll just get rid of this question and we'll go with Was it. Was he right? Yes, jealousy is the green eyed monster. Big tall fella, you can't miss him. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, Paul, listen. We're very important right now. Very important. The Quiet Man was one of John Wayne's. Few non-Western pictures. Where did the film take place? A public library. <laughs> uh, it took place in, uh, in, Reno, uh, in Ireland. The Quiet Man? Yes. Took place in Ireland. I'm going to disagree with oh. you. Here are the moons again in Ireland. X does not get the square. We'd give you three in a row. The third, I'm and you sorry. must earn yourself. Jaja, ja, don't be I upset. I never done that in my life. That's all right. Dear. He always Listen. says that. I never done it in my life. <laughs> I said, now, don't you be upset. You know what's real funny about that? Jaja ja yelled out jealousy, thinking that it was uh, a comedy line. Well, I know that. <laughs> she thought it was funny. She he didn't know it. Jet. You know what I mean? John, jet. you are looking for nine hundred dollars here. She didn't know she was going to win. For two hundred and fifty dollars, Paul, is a recent party. Liz Taylor had 1,000 little diamonds and 25 large ones decorating a part of her body. Which part? Um, her chin. <laughs> uh, Twenty-five large diamonds and 1,000 little diamonds decorating one part of her body. Uh, what was on the other one? I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I'll say, uh, let's see, 25, uh, uh, 
A thousand. A thousand little ones. Little ones. I, I Twenty-five large either, diamonds decorating. Either a quarter. belt or a choker. I'll, I'll go for a choker. A choker. I agree. Nope. nope. Her head. They were in oh. her hair, and she sparkled and glowed. Oh. We have an X there for Charlie yeah, McLean. <laughs> I'll go. To Paul, here's one on personality traits. Okay, here's one on personality traits. It's a person who sits with one leg over the arm of a chair, likely to be cooperative or uncooperative. Is uh, this person a man or a woman? <laughs> um. It doesn't state, really, Paul. I guess man or woman. But if a person is sitting there with one leg over the arm of the chair, is he or she likely to be cooperative or uncooperative? Uh, I would say uh, that's a very relaxed position. Uh, very cooperative. Cooperative. I disagree. No, it's uncooperative, Paul. And uh, we have the circle. You disagree? And it is your turn, Charlie. Open. Before Virginia Graham was a talk show hostess, what did she do for a living? Oh. Uh, she was a pilgrim. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, I'm going to go with uh, something we found out... Uh, on the daytime, I think it was, uh, Hollywood Square, she uh, was a newspaper lady, a reporter. I agree. I'll, I'll get uh, an answer from Virginia. Is that true? In part. Yes. I, I, we can accept yes. that? I went to bed with the print. Is that it? All right, we'll accept that and we'll put a circle right there. Charlie, go right ahead. Paul Lynn. Paul, according to Ava Gabor, I don't believe in them. They're unnatural. What doesn't Ava Gabor believe in? Uh, Raquel Welch. <laughs> <laughs> that means time is up, but we have to complete the question. Now, what, what, what does uh, Ava Gabor not believe in? <laughs> she doesn't believe in something. What is it? It's it, just period. No, in regard to no one. Uh, she just, there's something she doesn't believe right. in. Right. Um, I don't think she believes in... Uh, Overnight success. Overnight success. I disagree. No, it's bras, which is kind of an overnight <laughs> success. Bras? We, we have the circle, and that means the time is up. Go right ahead. Fall in. Uh, Henry Kissinger recently was quoted as saying, they aren't even sexy. What was he referring to? Uh, the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff. <laughs> He was right. <laughs> they aren't even sexy. That's what he was quoted as saying recently, Henry Kissinger. Sexy. Um, I'll say uh, 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 topless, topless dancers. True. True. I agree. No. Uh, the starlets he dates. Uh, the starlets and... Uh, They'll be glad he to hear that. that. No, they'll be thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> that they're, they're, Jill St. John, if you know, she's not a starlet. She's a star. We she's have a circle there. And uh, Sharon, it's your turn. Yeah. Uh, for this game, Vance, good luck on the show. You'll start it all. I'll take Paul in. According to baby doctors, when a baby bangs his head against her uh, or his crib, it is generally just before doing something else. What? <laughs> uh, numeral uno. <laughs> 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 uh, that he's going to, uh, he does this usually right before he does something else, what? Uh, I would say start to cry for attention. I agree. No, going to sleep. It's his pleasurable way of going to sleep. <laughs> wow. Yes, that helps. That's why you think it's easy being it's a, a parent? Baby. <laughs> what a circle, Sharon. Amy Vanderbilt. Many Americans, Paul. Uh, many American, rather many American magazines recently pictured Queen Elizabeth stepping ashore in Bangkok onto a carpet made of, made of what? Uh, 40% Dak Cron. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was it under Niagara Falls? What country? Uh, Bangkok, yes, onto a carpet made of... Bangkok, they have so many, uh, flowers. I'll say flowers. I agree. Flowers. Very good, Paul. With an X. Sharon, here's some cash. You'll start the round. Paul in, please. When the citizens of China want a drink of water, they always do something to it first. What? Uh, remove the shirts. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I know that uh, I just read this the other day that uh, the Nixon party, that all the water will be boiled. Um, so I think it must be true of the rest of them. I agree. That is it. They boil it. Uh, with the next, Sharon, your turn. Go right ahead. For $250, Richard Burton said recently that he gets up and does it every morning for two or three hours while Elizabeth Ooh. is still sleeping. What does he do? He surprises her. <laughs> no, but Richard Burton did say recently that he gets up and does it every morning for two or three hours while Elizabeth is still sleeping. What does he do? Uh, takes a nap. <laughs> uh, I would say, uh, since he's off the juice, probably... Uh, I would say jogging, some kind of exercise. Oh, exercise. I'll agree with that. No, he writes his memoirs like Once Upon a Time, I Met This Lady. No, we put a circle there. Back in it. True or false? It is illegal in certain parts of Georgia for chickens to cross roads. Well, in the case of Georgia versus Cocky Locky. <laughs> It's true. It's true. I agree. It is true. Yeah. Wow. Good. Right? In the Bible, who was Naomi's faithful companion? Tonto. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi's faithful companion in the Bible. Faithful companion in the Bible. Naomi's. Uh, Abraham. I'll agree. Ruth. <laughs> what a circle, Gladys. <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> oh. According to Queen Elizabeth of England, there is something in the air near Windsor Castle which uh -oh. makes it unbearable for her to take tea in the castle garden. What is it? A flock of naughty pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> something in the air. Yeah. Something in the air that makes them impossible. Uh, probably a shedding of leaves. I'll agree. No, the sound of planes. Windsor is on the main flight approach to the London airport. With an so, Jenna Lane. Raquel Welch recently stated, it's a carnival atmosphere, but I can understand its popularity. It's a batchy, sweaty, funky life, but I enjoyed it. What is it? Uh, a choir girl. <laughs> <laughs> It must have been uh, her movie experience with the uh, roller skating. I agree. That's it, the roller derby, and uh, an ex goes there. Betsy, Len break for you. Call in, please. According to an official at Buckingham Palace, Queen Elizabeth is seriously thinking of letting her son, Prince Charles, do something very important. What is that? It's either her hair <laughs> or Queen Julianne. <laughs> Do something very important. Yeah. She's considering it. Considering it. Uh, to take over before, uh, which is, you know, usually uh, the death. I think to take over before she actually... To become king. I agree. She is considering abdicating in favor of her son by 1977. Her silver jubilee. Very good, Paul. To Sir Will Francis, your turn. To the boss. The tin man wanted a heart and the lion wanted courage. What did the straw man want? He wanted the ten man to notice him. <laughs> the ten man wanted a heart. Mm -hmm. And what, what did you say? The ten other? man wanted a heart, the lion wanted, wanted courage. courage. Yeah, the straw man. What did he want? The straw man. Oh, boy. The straw man wanted to be able to cry. To be able to cry. I disagree. No, he wanted a brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the next. And Betsy, it's your turn. <laughs> Wally Cox. Ah, Paul Lynn, please. If the skin around your gold wedding band has turned dark, it probably means your system has a great deal of something. What? Uh, bigotry. <laughs> <laughs> It uh, probably means you have a high uh, acidity, uh, an acidity. I agree. That's right. A good start with the next. Betsy, go right ahead. Mel Brooks. Mel. President Nixon 
revealed recently, Paul, that he always keeps one of these in his desk drawer because it is symbolic of his favorite sport. What is it? Oh, a ski. <laughs> Long drawer, eh? <laughs> no, I think they put a, an alley in for him. Was it for him? They're bowling people. I'll say a bowling ball. A bowling ball. I disagree. No, it's a football. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. <laughs> Betty? <laughs> Good luck here. Yes. <laughs> according, to, uh, according to French chef Julia Child, how much is a pinch? Five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but according to French chef Julia Child, how much is a pinch? Now stick with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just enough to turn her on. <laughs> <laughs> How much is a pinch? A pinch is just enough that you can get between a thumb and your uh, 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 index finger. I'll agree. No, it's a half teaspoon. Oh, well, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> we can't for the next day, Lee. Uh, well, no, you, you pick a star. Uh, Paul, in, Paul in to win. Paul in to win $500. Uh, Paul? According to psychologists, do most people think uh, people who have good suntans also have a lot of money? Well, I know Flip Wilson's rich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> suntans and money. Yeah, there you go. Hand in hand. Well, I know that you have to be, well, of course, a lot of, you know, at unemployment, the tannest people are unemployed. There are, uh, you have time to go into the sun. I, I will disagree. I'll say so no. no. I agree with you. No, it's yes. Uh, my no, kids are yes. both tan and they're both no, busted. Yes. <laughs> we can't, uh, yes, we can put a circle there. So a break for Betty Smith. We'll pause for this commercial. No, it's... Paul, the first one in this country was set up a little over 100 years ago. And it was shaped like an hourglass. Today they have lines across them and are shaped like rec uh, a rectangle. What are they? Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, real fast again. The first one in this country was set up a little over a hundred years ago, and it was shaped like an hourglass. Today they have lines across them, are shaped like a rectangle. What are they? That's true. Uh, the weather report. I mean, uh, the barometer. I disagree. Tennis courts. Tennis and the number courts. of new courts is booming. <laughs> and we have an X. And uh, Betty, your turn. Buddy Hackett. Buddy Hackett to block. Paul Lind. Paul Lind to win $250. When a bullfighter retires, it's traditional to have a ceremony where something of his is removed. What? <laughs> his ears. <laughs> no, that's the bull, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I would say his cue, the, uh, the, the hair braid. The pigtail. I agree. That's right. Very good, the hair in the back. And you have $250, bro. Huh? True or false? Nylon is stronger than steel. But steel panties don't turn me on. <laughs> uh, nylon is powerful. I'll, I'll say it is. I agree. Uh, nylon rope, for instance, is about 50% stronger than steel cable of the same thickness. Interesting. With an X, you're on the board. Her own. Secret Square Game. Go right ahead, dear. For $250. True or false? The Niagara Falls were once located seven miles away from where they are today. Uh, yes, and it's a tribute to beacons. <laughs> uh, they'll like the plug up there. Yeah. Yes, uh, it is true. They are eroding that, that fast. I agree. And they are moving steadily upstream. Yes, $250. Congratulations, Denver. We're going to hurriedly clear the board here. Uh, Paul Lind. Lucille Ball received something small and gray from her hubby on her last birthday. What was it? <laughs> small and gray. For her last birthday. Lucille Ball received something small and grave from her hubby on her last birthday. What was it? Small and grave. 
Um, a cat. A cat. I agree. It was a poodle. We put an X oh. there. Your turn, Denver. Pick uh, a star. Marty Allen. Marty Allen. No, that Noel is delighted about the whole thing. According to Glenn Campbell, love to me is something you, you what? Purchase. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, love is something you... Love to me is something you... This is according to Glenn Campbell. Uh, you earn, I guess. You earn. I disagree. No, he said give. And in the act of giving, it always manages to work its way back to the giver. Oh, oh Glenn, we love it. Excellent. $250 no Paul, according to medical statistics, a woman who is divorced, has a college education, and is 19 years old, is more likely to get a certain ailment than anybody else. Get what? Oh, heartbreak of psoriasis. Uh. <laughs> oh, I but according to medical statistics, a woman who is divorced, has a college education, and is 19 years old, is more likely to get a certain ailment than anybody else. What is it? Divorced, 19. Mm hmm Uh, what? Uh, I will... <laughs> oh, 19 is what throws me. Uh, I have no idea. All right, I'll off the question to Cricket. Would you like this, dear? No. Okay, it's a headache. We'll go to another Paul Lynn question, right? In the original classic movie, Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein was supposed to do something very important the day the monster killed him. What was he supposed to do? I think a tonsillectomy. What was he supposed to do? Yeah, the, the doctor was supposed to do something very important that day. The monster killed him. What was it? I think uh, put the monster away. Put the monster away. I agree. No, get married. Get X married. gets the square. No. Oh, time is up. That means... In ancient times, it was illegal to park your chariot in certain places in the biblical city of Nineveh. What was the penalty if you did so? They uh, let all the air out of your horse. <laughs> What was the penalty for illegal parking in the biblical city of Nineveh in ancient times? I would say the dungeon, probably. The dungeon. Mm, I disagree. No death. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with a circle, Steve. Uh, Mr. Lind, is a jealous wife likely to be a better or a worse lover than a wife who is not jealous? Uh, I found him to be much better. <laughs> <laughs> A jealous wife, is she likely to be better or a worse, a better or a worse lover than a wife who is not jealous? I would say the jealous wife makes a better lover. I agree. Yes, according to psychological studies. Hey, these studies, I don't know. Uh, Carol? The United Nations. The United Nations has approved a plan in which you will be reimbursed for any damage to your health or your property caused by something falling on you. What? Uh, the Secretary General. <laughs> that pays you eight bucks. <laughs> and all you can eat. Yeah. Falling on you. Yeah. Insurance and uh, for some. Well, the United Nations has approved a plan in which will uh, you will be reimbursed for any damage to your health or your property caused by something falling on you. What? Something falling on you. Um. I will uh, see falling on you. Meaning that the, their home, not inside the UN. Uh, oh. All I can tell you is what I have here. Something falling on you. I uh, tell you what, uh, obviously yeah. Paul is stuck for a bluff uh, or a real answer, so we <laughs> offer the question to our player. If you would like it, it is yours. <laughs> no, thank you. A very tough question, Paul. <laughs> Objects you. which have been launched into space. That's what Buddy That's what Buddy, said. well, Buddy, yeah. let's, he's, he's got that brain. What not any say? object, communication satellites only that are good for the benefit of everybody. Oh, excuse me, buddy. Yeah. See how much I know? Yeah. Uh, Paul, back to uh, your question. Get in my sex question next time. <laughs> Out of every ten people, Paul, who are audited by the Internal Revenue Service, how many end up paying more taxes? Out of what? 
out of uh, every 10 people who are audited, how many uh, end up paying more taxes? 11. <laughs> uh, oh, gee, I'll... Uh, paying more. I would say uh, seven. Seven. I disagree. Seven. Oh, I'm good. With an X. Wow. This Elizabeth Taylor's middle name, is it Rosalie Rosemond or Rosalinda? Rosalie Rosemond or Rosalinda? Elizabeth Taylor's middle name. See, I'm trying to think English because she's English. Rosalie Rosemond or Rosalinda? I'll say Rosemond. I'll agree. That's right. We have the block. Carol, your turn. Paul, historians say that King Henry VIII had Anne Boleyn beheaded because she couldn't do one particular thing. What? <laughs> Convince Henry VIII he was Henry I. <laughs> uh, uh, She couldn't do one particular thing, so Henry VIII had her beheaded. I Anne think Boleyn. it was giving him a child. I, I agree. Yeah, a son. Right. Yes. So you have another X, and we have a commercial word. We'll be back. Paul in on one. All right. According to the Constitution, Paul, what's the proper term for our form of government? At the moment, <laughs> shaky. <laughs> or will you accept? <laughs> <laughs> the According to the Constitution, again. what's the proper term for our form of government? A republic for which it stands. A republic. I agree. We can accept no others except republic. Very good, Paul. In the circle. Joe, your turn. <laughs> Paul Lynn, please. Paul, true or false, right this very minute, you are being watched by something on the moon. Well, where was it when I had my series? <laughs> Both of them. Yeah. No, no, that's it. Rub it in. <laughs> uh -huh. But are you being watched by something on the moon this very minute? Yes, yes. Something. I'll, yes. I'll agree with that. No, you're not. <laughs> now, none of us are being watched by anything on the moon. Put a circle there. You have circles all over the place. Now, let me explain. <laughs> yes, let me go with uh, Paul Lind, please. Paul, President Ford has stated that the only way it will happen will be over my dead body. What? President Rockefeller. <laughs> The only way it'll happen will be oh, over I know, my dead body. I know, body. I know, fine. Uh, uh, gas rationing. Gas rationing. I agree. That's right. Another X. Nancy, your turn. It's okay. Does Billy Graham think it's okay to look at pictures of naked women? <laughs> yeah, but he can afford the real thing. <laughs> Well, uh, certainly there are nudes in religious pictures. Uh, I have to say, yes. I'll agree. He says it leads only to frustration or even worse things. <laughs> He's wrong. Well. for the next day. Tony, a break for you. Paul in, please. Paul in to block. True or false, French police recently raided a house of ill repute for senior citizens and arrested several men in their 70s. And they were charged with loitering. <laughs> I, I, I would say that's true. I'll agree. One fellow was 77. <laughs> Kept yelling, Vive la différence. <laughs> yes. You have the circle. All right, it's your turn, Rick. Now, let me say something. Uh, there's a super square up there. It's either Earl or Jan. How are you going to play? Uh, I'll go with Paul in. That's the secret square, and you were searching for it, too, Rick. I saw you looking around here. 
Okay, this would be Secret Square number two one this evening, and I hope you get it. Rick, listen carefully. Paul, which of the following great artists was not, was not French by birth? Was not French by birth. Uh. <laughs> was it Cezanne, Degas, or Picasso? Was not French by birth. Cezanne, Degas, or Picasso? Oh, my, uh, see, there's a big mix-up about Picasso. He was either exiled. Uh, Degas, I know, is French. Uh, who's it? And Cezanne is... I, I'll, I'll say... Uh, I think I'll say Pablo Picasso. I'll agree. Yeah, I believe he was Spanish. Yes, by birth. You have the X. This is for $250. Paul, according to psychologists, can most people accept laughter during romantic encounter? I think they prefer applause. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? That, that is our buzzer. Now, that's put on a timer, so they, that is not done in the booth. That, whoever, blank, and, and it always, some opportune moments, yes. It has no sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that is our buzzer that means the time is up. And this is for $250 for Rick, so I'll go back to Paul in for the question here. Paul, according to psychologists, can most people accept laughter during romantic encounter? Most people. I, uh, I would say so, yes. I would disagree. It is yes. Thank you. We uh, put a circle there, and now we're going to add up the scores. Well, the best looking men in the world, Paul Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> True or false? <laughs> True or false, guy? Yeah, one is. <laughs> the more money. <laughs> The more money you make, the more likely you are to take a drink now and then. Is that why Catherine Kuhlman slurs her words? <laughs> no, <that's it>. uh, <laughs> the more apt you are to... Yeah, the more money you make, the more uh, likely you are to take a drink. I think... Um, I think it causes lots of anxieties. <laughs> Well, time is money here. I'll agree. Good. Statistics show that people are less likely to be teetotalers as their income rises. You have a circle, Ed. Give us a head. Time is money now. Again, I get back. Paul Lynn. All righty. Paul Lynn. According to parakeet experts, parakeet <laughs> experts, can a drop or two of bourbon be good for your bird? <laughs> no, after a drop of bourbon, I get me. <laughs> uh, uh, Can a drop or two of bourbon be good for the bird, according to parakeet experts? If it'll shut it up, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I expect it could. It can help him get over a cold, yes. Oh. All right, with a circle. Ed, your turn. Please, now, pick a star. Okay. Harold, tie game. You could blow. Paul Lynn. All right, that is the move, yes. According to Dr. Thodeson, what's the what? major cause of itching? I didn't hear what you said. What's the major cause of itching in old folks? Oh, eating shredded wheat in bed. <laughs> what is this? Can the major cause of itching in old folks? What is it? Uh, I'd have to be, uh, you know, excessive dryness. Of Dry the skin. skin. Yeah? Absolutely. Sure, because the body is producing less oils. You have the circle. Add your turn. Uh, Paul Lynn. Paul Lynn to block diagonally. We all know that birds go south as soon as the winter chill sets in. Do whales do the same? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. I know the gray whales do. Uh, my sister's a member of the Sierra Club, and they watch them go down every year. Yes, they do go south. I disagree. They yes, do. they do. Some swim as far as 2,000 miles to find warmer water. Let me explain something, Harold. Paul is not the secret square. It's worth over $2,600. Paul Lynn to win. For $250. According to a Stanford University study, who has a greater tolerance for pain, 
young folks or old folks? I don't know yet. I'm having four more old people in tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Greater tolerance for pain, young or old folks? Well, uh, you lose your senses in, in real old age. I mean, so maybe you lose that one too. Maybe it eases up. Maybe older people can take pain more than little children. I'll agree. No, it's the young. Yeah. It's the young. We put a circle there. Dolores, back in it. Uh, Lynn. Paul, according to the National Enquirer, Richard Burton recently stated, I'm quite serious about this. I hate it. Honestly, I, I just can't bear it. What was he referring to? Uh, cholera. <laughs> uh, uh, I just hate it. Yeah, I I'm quite serious about this. I hate it. Honestly, I just can't bear it. What was he referring to? I hate it. I just can't bear it. Hmm. He's such an easygoing guy. Uh, one of the most charming people I've ever met. Uh, Thank you, Paul. <laughs> I, I will say uh, uh, he stopped drinking. Maybe he'd learned to hate it. I don't know. Maybe drinking. I'll say drinking. I disagree. No, it's acting. Acting. He's brilliant, but he doesn't like it. We'll have a circle there. Harold, you're... Yeah. Hugh Hefner is quoted as saying, next to beautiful women. I think I like blanks best. What comes after beautiful women? A uh, paternity suit. <laughs> um, what? He, think, he says, I, I, next to beautiful women, I think I like blanks best. Fill in the blank. Next to beautiful women, I think I like blank. Uh, uh, horses. Horses. I'll disagree. <laughs> Gadgets. Okay, uh, we have the X. Uh, Dolores, it's your turn. Paul, do 250 million Hindus worship a peacock? They did until they ate it. <laughs> uh, they're eating everything and then, yeah. <laughs> uh, but do 250 million Hindus worship a peacock? Yes or I no? think they worship a cow. <laughs> so you say no? No. Oh, 250 million? Mm -hmm. There's 8 billion there, <laughs> aren't there? Just maybe a small little town. A small little town? 250 million? You know how they multiply. I, uh, I, I will still go with, I don't, I, 250 million, then that's just a cow. No, 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 no. I disagree with Paul. Oh, yes, they do. It's the emblem of Krishna. Put an X there. Okay, Laura, your turn. True or false? According to columnist Bert Backrack, people tend to start shrinking a little after about age 30. Uh -huh. Did you know that Rosemary is standing up in her kitchen? Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, do 30? Well, you know that I used to be six eggs on the head, and I'm now like a quarter inch under. I think I think you also got a little stooped. <laughs> <laughs> you say it's true? Oh, yes. I agree. Absolutely. You settle there. Okay, leave your turn. Paul in the block. Paul, according to the classic old song, it was there I knew that you loved me true. Where? Is it okay to point? <laughs> <laughs> According to the classical song, it was there I knew that you loved me true. Where? In your eyes of blue. In your eyes of blue. Patty? I agree. No, no oh. audience. Oh. Down by oh. the old mill street. Uh, we have a commercial. We'll be right back. <laughs> well, the secret square up there, and uh, it's your option. I'll go with Paul Landon. All righty, for tie game, Paul. Did any Shakespearean character use the expression, right on? Shakespearean character, right on? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right on, right on. I'd say it was near the love scene. Near the end of the love scene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. 
So you say, you say yes. I think she said right on, Rome. <laughs> he said yes. I'll agree. You'll buy that? I'll buy that. In Julius Caesar, Mark Anthony says, I only speak right on. Yes, you have a next year tie game. <laughs> Paul, reportedly, the marriage contract between Aristotle Onassis and Jackie Kennedy stated that if Jackie did something within five years after they were married, Ari would give her $18 million. If Jackie did what? If she made all pro with the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> but if Jackie... Let's hear what you would say. <laughs> within five years after they were married, Ari would give her $18 million. If she did what? If she did something within five years after they married, he would give her, her $18, 18 million. If 18 she did million. what? Yeah. Let's see. I would say... Uh, I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> and that's Bob Quigg. <laughs> uh, I would say, uh, they have not had any children. I would say, uh, give me a child. I disagree. No, if she left him, he would have given her $18 million. But she's expected to get at least $100 million if he goes to that big, big place in the, in the sky. sky. Yeah. So uh, we put an extra. You have the block wheel part. Experts who are repairing Michelangelo's famous statue, the Pieta were recently surprised to find something in the figure's left hand that they hadn't noticed before. What? Uh, oh, uh, a five-dollar win ticket on Goliath. <laughs> no, uh... Oh, I read... <clears throat> See, I read the... Uh, I mean, I read the... Um, the securities around that while they're doing the work, and they said that the... Experts say you can, won't be able to tell at all that it, it was ever harmed. Yeah, but what, what did they, nah. they found something in the figure's left hand that they hadn't <laughs> noticed before. What was it? I didn't read that. <laughs> uh, uh, I, that, that she had in her left hand. Mm -hmm. They found something in the figure's left hand that they hadn't noticed before. Uh, a ring. A ring. Uh, I'll disagree. No, the letter M. Presumably, uh, presum well, uh, from Michelangelo, I guess. Yes, uh, Virginia, you're too. Paul LeBlanc, I might have got a bird to win. I keep forgetting. Paul, does, uh, does Raquel Welch like milkshakes? She doesn't have much choice, does she? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh... Uh, she's probably one of these ladies can, that can, you know, eat anything and not gain. And uh, She probably does. She loves them. Yes. I'll agree. Yes, and we have an X there. Your turn, Virginia. Go right ahead. Paul, according to the World Book, what's the main thing we get from Honduras? You got it too. <laughs> <laughs> Their main, uh, our main import from Honduras. Honduras, man, part. Uh, I will say, uh, sh uh, sugar or pineapple, uh, something tropical. I am not up on the Honduras. I'll go, f I'll go with, uh, sugar. Sugar. I'll disagree. Banana. 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 Yes, the banana republic with a circle. Okay, Bruce. Hold in in the center. Paul, what television show tells us the story of a black family who moves to Manhattan and takes up residence in a fancy high-rise apartment building? Oh, um, uh, <laughs> I, you know, uh, it's Marvel. The Jeffersons. The Jeffersons. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Yes, you have the block, and it is your... Davidson, no, Paul Lind, please. Paul Lind, already, this is for the block. Paul, speaking about her hubby, Carlo, Sophia Loren recently stated... He loves it. He really loves it. And of course, it's good to love it. But there can be too much of it. What is it?
Oh, it's either pasta or her. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it, of course. It's, it's good to love it, but there can be too much of it. What is it? Um, I'll say money. Money. Uh, I'll disagree. Work. You have the X. Okay, Patty, your turn. Rotting. Friends. Oh. Doris Day's Beverly Hills Neighbors. Paul recently made Doris get rid of some things she was quite, quite fond of. What? Ooh. Her musical hide a bed and three <laughs> Korean acrobats. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I disagree. He's being oh, no. You disagree? <laughs> Did you disagree? <laughs> <laughs> um... Made her get rid of something. Yeah, Doris Day's Beverly Hills neighbor said she would have to get rid of something. She was quite fond of it, too. Well, she has many, many dogs. I don't know of any other animal she has. I'll, uh, I think there's, you know, restriction. I think you have to, can only have three and not be a kennel. And uh, I think it's all of her dogs. Dogs. I'll agree. She had to cut down from 25 to 5. Dogs. You have the circle. Paul, it's your turn. Pull in, please. Paul, true or false, there is a new bra on the market that squeaks in various musical tones. <laughs> the hills are alive. <laughs> <laughs> New brother squeaks musical tones. True or false? I mean for Halloween or something like that. <laughs> Notes. Musical tones. No, a, a legit brassiere. I just don't think anyone would want that attention brought to uh, <laughs> their bra. <laughs> I, I, I would say false. He said false. Falsy, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> not falsy, Don. No, not falsy. False. I'm going to disagree on general principles. <laughs> the hills are alive. Well, it's true. We have a commercial. Uh, yeah. Take a start. Paul in, please. Paul? Uh, what is the highest United States military award for bravery? Highest? Uh, they'll lend you $1,500 toward the home of your choice. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, highest military award for bravery. The Medal of Honor. Medal of Honor. Yes, I agree. Right. Well, the next. Okay, Mary, your turn. Robert Fuller. Paul, according to Shakespeare, Macbeth meets three women in strange attire who tell him that someday he will become what? Tony Orlando. He meets the three witches. And they, uh, they, they, say they will tell him someday that he will become something. Oh, Thane of Carter. King. King. I agree. Right. That's it. Yes, you've got yourself $500. Paul, and of course, Paul, true or false, studies at the University of Wisconsin show that you'll probably live longer if you love only one man or woman at a time. But it is all right to alternate. <laughs> <laughs> Live longer if you love one man or one man. Uh, yeah, probably true. I will disagree. Yes, it is true. Uh. Put a circle there. True or false? A woman was fired from a university cafeteria for failing to spread mayonnaise to the edges of sandwiches and being too slow with the sauerkraut. I'd just like to slap her silly. <laughs> <laughs> was, was a woman actually fired for that? I, I, yes, she was, but I think that they took her back. But she was fired. She was fired, yes, I agree. Yes, and she was rehired, I believe. But they put, <laughs> gave her another department. What an expert. Paul, according to experts, something strange happens when a person who stutters starts to whisper, what? He's twice as hard to understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Something strange. Uh, you know, I, if you said sing, you know, so I have uh, actor friends that have stuttering problems, and when they sing, they have no problem. I'll go with that, though, that they, they suddenly don't stutter. Patrick? Uh, would you repeat the sure. question? Sure. Something strange happens to a person, according to experts, when, who stutters when they start to whisper. What? He said stops stuttering. I disagree. That is exactly correct. Yeah. 
Put a uh, circle there. I'll break for you. Stina, pick a star. Oh. Your wife just isn't interested at all in romance. Now, will giving her male hormones help? <laughs> well, just how would you do that? <laughs> Uh, your wife isn't interested in, in, in romance at all. Will giving her male hormones help the situation? Well, <clears throat> if you gave her female hormones, she'd go to the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would say, yes, I think it would help her. I disagree. No, and the side effects could be miserable, like she could trip on her beard or something. <laughs> <laughs> all right, put a circle there. We have a commercial. We'll be right back. In song, she has a brow that's all furrowed and wrinkled with care. Who is she? Oh, Edie Gourmet. <laughs> <laughs> you know that Steve and Edie watch this show every week. Well, she's a good laugher. <laughs> In song, she has a brow that's all furrowed and wrinkled with care. Who is she? Mother. I disagree. Uh, we, a little more specific, Paul. Mother McCree. Mother McCree. I disagree. That's Mother McCree. He was really specific. Hit it right on the button. Mother McCree. All Are right. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding. That's it. All right, put it next there, Patrick. Rose. Uh, traditionally, Pope Paul. Pope Paul does not have a big birthday to do. He doesn't. But he does get something special on his birthday. What? Kenny Williams, tell Pope Paul what he's getting for his birthday. What does the Pope usually get? He gets something special uh, on his birthday. That, that most of us get, I should say. Oh, I'd say a cake. A cake. I agree. It's baked, incidentally, by the nuns who prepare his meals. <laughs> yes, all right. You have less than moments. Your turn. According to his wife, what is Lawrence Welk's worst fault? Getting up in the morning. <laughs> Getting up in the morning. Uh, he, he likes to sit on his bubble machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know the Welks. <laughs> Let's see, uh, what his worst fault? Yeah, according to his wife. He's, uh, he certainly is this. I'll say uh, he's too nice. Too nice. I'll agree. No. no. In fact, it's his temper, which he has worked the hardest uh -huh. to overcome. He has a very bad temper, according to his wife. Yes. <laughs> but he counts up to a one, a, a two, a two. Yeah, we put a circle there, Wilma. <laughs> Paul, before you play a game called Idiot's Delight, Idiot's Delight, you must have one certain thing. What? Monty Hall to hold the box. <laughs> what game is the called name Idiot's of the Delight. Game? You must have one certain thing to play Idiot's Delight. What? I can't get a, a game. Oh, a game. I know the movie Idiot's Delight. Mm. Uh, a candle. A candle. I agree. A deck of cards. It's a form of solitaire. <laughs> Put it next there. All right, Michael, your turn. Paul, Howard Cosell's lovely wife, Emmy, says that ten times a day Howard says something to her. What? Is my hair back from the cleaners? <laughs> What does Howard say to his lovely wife, Emmy, ten times a day, according to his wife? Uh, I hear he's a very, uh, you know, good husband, loving man. I would say, I love you. I love you. That sounds all right. Good for Howard. And you have picked yourself up $250. Uh, your house just burned down. Who is probably more upset, you or your wife? Oh, I am. I'll miss her terribly.
Uh, <laughs> well, the man has to pay for the loss if the insurance company sure doesn't. Uh, I, I would say uh, uh, women like possessions more. I think they would be more upset. The woman would be more upset. Yeah, I'll agree with that. No. Women tend to keep their heads better in major crises, and it's the man. Now, let me ex explain. Barbara, that was in fact. How are you going to play it? I'm still going to go with Paul Lynch. All righty, for a tie game, Paul. According to Dr. David Rubin, what should you tell a 14-year-old boy who insists that he has no interest in girls? <laughs> Your slip is shown. <laughs> What should Ru Dr. Rubin, what would Dr. Rubin... What would, yeah, what, according to the good doctor, what should you tell a 14-year-old boy who insists that he has no interest in girls? Which uh, um, bide his time. I, you know, it's, uh, the, uh, some people don't uh, fall in love till they're mature sometimes. Barbara? I agree. Yeah, basically, that's it. You say nothing, really. He still has a lot of time to work up to an interest. Yes. All right. We have a tie game on that night. Call in. Paul, this is for $250. Queen Elizabeth generally swings her umbrella behind her back, and immediately something happens. What? Ah, uh, Lord Snowden doubles up in pain. Let's <laughs> <laughs> take that in your Nikon. Usually waves it behind her. Yeah, Queen Elizabeth generally swings her umbrella behind her back and immediately something happens. What? Uh, maybe something happens. Uh, probably uh, uh, a tendon or um, probably a guard appears. A guard appears. Or I disagree. Attendant. You disagree? Yes, we can accept that. An aide moves to her side. It's a signal, I would suppose. We uh, put a circle there. Cheryl? Oh, Paul Lind. According to Fred Astaire, his mother wanted him to do it when he was 35, but he refused, and he still hasn't done it. Done what? Moved out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> still hasn't done it. Yeah, his mother wanted him to do it, though, when he was 35, but he refused. He still hasn't done it. Done what? Uh, have his tonsils out. Have his tonsils out. I'll agree. <laughs> you bought that, eh? No, retired. He says he still has no desire to retire. And his mother says, quit, Fred, quit. We have an ex there. Arthur, a break for you. Secret Square game. Uh, Paul, Twiggy reportedly added an inch to her bust line while making the boyfriend. Now, incidentally, that is a motion picture, ladies and gentlemen. The boyfriend is a, is a motion picture, you see. All right, we'll try it again. Twiggy... Twiggy reportedly added an inch to her bust line while making the boyfriend. What does that make her bust measurement now? One. <laughs> uh, gotta be, you know, gotta retain like Charlie does. We had her measurement on the show once. She gained one inch. Mm-hmm. One. No, third. Uh, I'll go with uh, 32. 32. I'll disagree. He hit it right on the button. He retained. He remembered that, uh, yes, 32. She is now a dart. Uh, we cannot put a circle there. Cheryl, you'll have to earn that yourself. Uh, I'll take uh, Paul in to win. This is for $750. According to Zsa Zsa Gabor, she is waiting for a real man. And meanwhile, loves something fake. What? <laughs> oh, there, there oh it goes. isn't easy, Fred. Let me explain. That means the game is up, but we must complete the question. So we'll go with this question. According to Zsa Zsa Gabor, she is waiting for a real man. And meanwhile, loves something fake. What? Fake. Ah, uh, fake. Careful. Yeah, I, I know it. I was all ready with my answer until I realized you were here. Uh, <laughs> this is Zsa Zsa, not even. I know, I know. Uh, for something fake in mm -hmm. the meantime. Uh, I'll, I know that she's gotten rid of all of her furs because of her uh, new love for animals. Not new love, but her love for animals. I'll say fake furs. Furs. Fake, fake furs? furs? Mm-hmm. 
I'll disagree. It's jewels. She wears only fake jewelry since her robberies. We have a circle in $750. And listen to this. Talk diagonally. Now, there is a prune tree growing in your yard. How do you know when the prunes are ripe? My grandfather comes over. <laughs> uh, I didn't know there was a prune tree. I thought it was a plum tree. Well, they have plum trees, too, but there's also... There is a prune tree. Yeah. There is a prune tree growing in your yard. How do you know when the prunes are ripe? I, I would think that they would start to fall to the ground. Fall to the ground. Um, I agree. That's right, uh, because they are the plums, and they fall into those prunes and their stuff. And... You may. And so, Paul, your question here for the block. According to Ann Landers, should a wife ever tell her husband that he is a failure as a lover? Well, she should break it to him easy. <laughs> Like, uh, you're almost as good as... <laughs> uh, <laughs> What's the question? Should, he, should she ever... Ever tell her <laughs> husband he is a failure as a lover? Oh, I, not if she wants him to hang around, I wouldn't think. This is no. I agree. It is no. But does, how does she convey that, though? I mean, well, anyway... We there are ways. There are ways, well, okay. $50, Paul... Is it especially difficult to train an ostrich to become a sheepdog? <laughs> yes, they can't lift their leg without tipping over. <laughs> you mean the same function as sheepdog? Yeah, as a shepherd, in other words. A shepherd. Is it, is it, is a it shepherd easy? ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, boy, they sure could, you know, they could pass a sheep. They're so fast. They could sure catch them. I, I would say maybe they could. I'll disagree. Yeah, they make excellent shepherds, in fact. With a circle, Sheila, a break for you. Sick with square game. Karen. Paul, according to the old song, I'd like to be your sister, brother, dad, and mother, too. Who are you? Oh, Cesar Romero. <laughs> 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 Old Butch. <laughs> I'd like to be your sister, brother, dad, and mother, too. Who are you? Uh, I'd like to be your sister. I would say it sounds like a, uh, your lover. Your lover. I'll agree. No. Pretty baby. Pretty baby. I'd like to be your lover. <laughs> yeah. Karen. Karen. Paul. Circle. Circle. Oh. I'm, excuse me, put a circle there. All right. Now, Paul. Paul, there's a famous old, old saying around which says that a good one is worth more than money. A good what? Then how come they charge you for it? <laughs> <laughs> a good one? Yeah, an old saying around which says a good one is worth more than money. A good what? Famous old... Thing. I would say, uh, oh, if you've had that luck, uh, a good wife. A good wife. I'll disagree. No, a good reputation. Let's put a circle. Uh, Boy, it's here. David McCullen. David, is there anything on earth that can flap its wings faster than a hummingbird? Huh. How about an owl in a forest fire? <laughs> We don't have these specifics, just is there anything faster on earth that can flap its wings faster than a hummingbird? Ah, uh, Tony Randall is the authority on hummingbirds, and I think he told me there is nothing. He said nothing. I'll agree. Oh, yes, there is. Many, many insects, for example. Yes, I'll what does Tony know? Uh, for the next there, <laughs> Lieutenant? Don. According to Dr. Spock, a good rule of thumb about when to first discuss the facts of life with your child is when he does something. What? <laughs> Uh, gets his Barbie doll in trouble. <laughs> I would think the first time is when he asks you. When he asks you. I will agree. Right, well, the next. Okay, Bonnie, your turn. Jump.
In the agriculture, uh, 4-H clubs, you're from Ohio, you should know this, 4-H clubs, three of the H's are head, heart, and hands. What is the fourth? Hips. <laughs> Head, heart, hands, and health. Health. Did you repeat the question? Sure. 4-H Club. What do the H's stand for? We have head, heart, I hands. Agree. He said yes. Right. Very good for the next. Money. All right. Paul, on television, on television, what does the bionic woman do for a living? Uh, she keeps Lee Majors from getting rusty. <laughs> Bionic woman. She has a profession. What is that? Um, um, I think she's a doctor. A doctor. I disagree. No, she's a teacher, Paul. Yeah, put a circle there. All right. Here. What very, very popular song was originally titled The Bombardment of Fort McHenry? Oh, little town of Bethlehem. <laughs> What? what is the a very famous song? It was originally titled The Bombardment of Fort McHenry. Yeah. <laughs> Fort McHenry. Uh, the Yanks are coming. The Yanks are coming. <laughs> no, Francis Scott Key, remember the bomb? He wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Yeah, well, the next. Okay, ready? George Gobel, please. Hercules. Hercules is famous for his 12 labors. Franklin Roosevelt is famous for his four freedoms. And Richard Nixon is famous for his six. What? Names for Judge Sirica. <laughs> Nixon's six. Six, oh, I know. Trials, I think it was called. Six trials. I agree. No, that's okay. the idea, but we needed crises. Oh, yeah, crisis. his famous book, Six Crises. Can't put an X in. Now, fell, let me just say this. And? All right, four a block. At a horse race, can you tell one jockey from another just by looking at his pants? <laughs> <laughs> Only if he's carrying extra weight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can you differentiate jockeys by the, by the pants? By the colors, yes. I... Disagree. Good. They all wear white pants. Their shirts and hats are colored to tell them apart. So, that's a good disagree. Put a circle there. George, um, Paul in. Paul in to win. Yes, $250. Mm -hmm. Paul, you've been awarded a Nobel Prize. Where will you go to get it? Uh, Kenny Williams, tell me where I'm going to get my Nobel <laughs> Prize. <laughs> go ahead, Kenny. <laughs> Well, first we're going to stop. <laughs> uh, mm, I get these countries mixed up, but I think it's Sweden. Sweden. I agree. Stockholm, in fact, where the Nobel festivities are held. In $250. Paul, according to the old song, the Bible tells me so. Now, you're an Ohio boy, and I know that. The Bible tells me so. What three things do you have to have in order to live successfully? The, the love of a woman, a good job, and the love of another woman. <laughs> <laughs> For the Bible tells me so, the letters. But according to the old song, the Bible tells me so. What three things do you have to have in order to live successfully? Jesus loves me. I disagree. Uh, that's how it starts, but it's faith, hope, and charity in, in the oh. lyrics of the song. That's all right. We're the next. And even your turn. A spokesman, a spokesman recently revealed that Richard Nixon spends about three-fourths of his time doing something which he finds agonizing, agonizing. What is he doing, Richard Nixon? Oh, uh, reading uh, obscene skywriting. <laughs> um, uh, he finds it agonizing. He spends about three-fourths of his time doing it, though. Three-fourths of his time. I would, I would I'd probably say reading history. Reading history. I disagree. No writing his memoirs. Oh. Yes, okay, with the next. Eve, your turn. According to doctors, now Ralph here is a doctor, he may know this. According to doctors, can spending a night in a sleeping bag do anything good for you? 
<laughs> I'll say my den mother bought me a Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> can, can it do anything good for you, sleeping in a sleeping bag? Yes. Yeah. I'll tell you why. According to the Texas Children's Hospital in Houston, sore muscles, <laughs> of course they are, are effectively eased by the uniform heat of the sleeping bag. Well, put an X there. And, uh, Paul, on the debut of his television show, he walked out with his thumb in his mouth and said, I want my nana. Who did that? Was that the State of the Union address? <laughs> <laughs> they do on his television show. He walked out with his thumb in his mouth and said, I want my nana. Who did that? Well, it sounds like Jonathan, but I don't know. I want my nana. I want my nana. <laughs> um... I'll say Red Skelton. Red Skelton. I'll disagree. Johnny Carson on his first Tonight Show. Yes. Okay. You've got. John Double. Paul, uh, when he was a child, Paul, when he was a child, American frontier hero Daniel Boone was adopted. Daniel Boone was adopted. Who adopted Daniel Boone? Oh, boy. The Indians. The Indians. I'll agree. The Shawnee wow. Indian. Yes, you've got the circle. Ralph, your turn. Two hundred fifty dollars. Mm. True or false? A woman in Idaho has filed a big lawsuit because she was stuck in a restroom stall and couldn't get out. <laughs> Why, that's false imprisonment. <laughs> <laughs> she had to slip her complaint under the door. <laughs> uh, She was in stuck the, in this restroom stall and couldn't get out. Is a woman suing because of that? I I would, I would say yes. I'll agree to that. You've got yourself two hundred and fifty dollars. Congratulations. Paul Landeblad. Paul, has there ever been a nine-pound goldfish? <laughs> yes, and it starred in the Japanese version of Jaws. <laughs> Nine pound goldfish. <laughs> uh, well, they cl uh, some people classify carp as goldfish, and I've seen them weigh that. He said yes. Yes, I've seen that. I agree. In fact, it made the Guinness Book of Records just recently. We have a commercial. You're on the Paul. You are listening to passion, passion music. In all probability, where are you? The Oxnard Conservatory of Electronics and Massage. <laughs> I've passed it many times. Yeah. You're listening to passion music. In all probability, where are you if you listen to passion music? I would say you're in church. In church. I disagree. Sure, it's the uh, sacred opera usually oh. sung during Holy Week and only in church. Can't put a circle there, Ruth. Paul Land. Righty, for $250. A famous person stated recently, Paul, I have not been frustrated by being number two, and I'm having a great time. Who was it? Henry Weinberg. <laughs> <laughs> That's Liz's trick. <laughs> uh, this is, uh... That's Liz's ex trick, yeah. Well, this week, uh, I'll say, I'll say it must be Rockefeller. Rockefeller. I agree. That's it. Two hundred and fifty dollars, Ruthann. Congratulations. Now, Paul, what's another name for the famous Queen of the Adriatic? <laughs> Could be so many people. <laughs> <laughs> Another name for the famous Queen of the Adriatic. Um, I, I'll say Greece. Greece. I disagree. No, Venice, Italy. Venice. With a circle. George, your turn. Hal Linden. Star, my friend. Paul Lynn, please. No, I would have gone to Sandy to block. This may work out. I'll give you two lines. You give me the title of the famous song. You must remember this. A kiss is just a kiss. A sigh is just a sigh. 
As time goes by. As time goes by. I agree. Go to the next there, Ruth, quickly. Uh, Sandy. Okay, Paul in, please. Paul, true or false, Jerry Lewis paid $15,000 to have his dog fitted with a hearing aid. Yes, but he actually raised $150,000. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I tell you, I'm, I hope it's true, and if it is, I'm going to call him because Harry's losing his hearing, uh, and if that's possible, I'd sure spend it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I agree. Uh, yeah, it's true. Jerry loves that dog, just like you love old Harry McAfee. Okay, Paul, true or false, gypsy folklore. Gypsy folklore says that God created man by baking him in an oven. Looks like you were overcooked. <laughs> Is that true or false? Oh, you'll have to give it to me again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gypsy folklore says that God created man by baking him in an oven. True or false? True. I'll agree. That is true. All right. <laughs> Cliff, your turn. False. Eating a lot of cheese, cheese, can help cut down on how much pain you feel. That's why I never serve a salad with Roquefort. Uh, uh, In other words, cheese can uh, cut down on how much pain you feel. True or false? Well, I... Nutritionally, uh, cheese is not that good for you. Uh, I'm going to say it doesn't cut down on pain. He said that's false. I don't think I'll disagree. It uh, contains a substance which makes you less sensitive to pain. Good to hear that. All right, you've got the circle and Cliff, it's your turn. Jim. Paul, true or false? For sixty dollars, for sixty dollars, any tourist can have his picture taken next to the Golden Gate Bridge with a naked lady. <laughs> and with extra forty dollars you get to cross the bridge <laughs> <laughs> can you have your picture taken next to the golden gate bridge uh with a naked lady for sixty bucks yes i'll agree to show the folks back home i guess you're having a swinging time in san fran you've got the circle Cliff. Michael paul superstitious people believe that stepping on something will bring bad luck stepping on what frank sinatra's foot <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, that, uh, 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 the crack in the sidewalk. Step on the crack. I agree. That's right. With a circle, then. Uh, Paul, true or false, vitamins can make you smell bad. That's why I prefer not to exercise with Jack LaLanne. <laughs> uh, some vitamins can. Agreed. Uh, B1 is a killer. Yes, okay, all right. You got the circle, then your turn. Within two... Within two, how many husbands have the three Gabor sisters had among them? You mean including their own? <laughs> <laughs> how many husbands, husbands have the, the Gabor sisters have had? Yes, combined, uh, total. <laughs> within two. Oh, within two. Yeah. I was hoping you were going to say within a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Two. Let's see. Two, four. All, all the sisters? All the not sisters just combined. No. I will say uh, two, six, a ten. Ten. I agree. Seventeen. Oh. Put an X there. Okay, pick a start. True false. According to the Los Angeles Times, right before he died, Show and Lie said, I shall soon be seeing Karl Marx. But first, Gene Harlow. <laughs> uh, I, uh, he was certainly his idol. I would think that would be some. Yes, that is true. I agree. That is true. All right, right. you've got the ball in to win. On May 20th, 1927, something historic began, which lasted. 33 hours and 29 minutes. What? 
Wasn't that the year of the Dion quintuplets? <laughs> May 20th, 1927, something historic began. 1927, May 20th, which lasted 33 hours and 29 minutes. Historic. Historic. 27. Mm. Uh, I don't think Paul has a bluff for this. Jan, would you like the question? No. Uh, I, I bet you George knows. What is it, George? Lindbergh flew across the ocean. That's right. Lindbergh's famous oh. flight to New York to Paris. Actually, St. Louis to Paris. All right. Uh, back to a Paul Lynn question. Paul, according to the Philadelphia Inquirer, what bad habit will your dog probably develop if you constantly feed him table scraps? He'll mm -hmm. want Thursdays off. <laughs> Uh, oh, he will just um, uh, drive you crazy when you're having, uh, you know, your meal with your family or something. Begging. He'll be begging all the time. I agree. That's absolutely correct. Uh, circle gets the square. We have game. Call in to block. Paul, if you stripped all the paint off the Mona Lisa, if you stripped all the paint off the Mona Lisa, what would you find underneath? A T-shirt. <laughs> I stripped all the paint In off. In other words, what was it painted on, the Mona Lisa? Oh, obviously not canvas, I guess, huh? Uh, I didn't say there was... I know. Paint. Well, uh, well, I'll just, I'll, I'll go with canvas. Canvas. I'll agree. No, wood. It's painted on wood. Can't put an X there. Okay, Paul Lynn, please. Paul, at what famous place in America will you find couples strolling arm in arm along flirtation walk and smooching at a place called Kissing Rock? Oh, Leavenworth. <laughs> Very oh. famous place in America. Couples stroll arm in arm along flirtation walk. And smooch at a place called Kissing Rock. I saw that movie 80 times. West Point. West Point. I agree. I saw the movie too, yes. All right. With another circle. According to Glamour magazine, Paul, do people tend to eat more when the lights are low? What? Uh, do people tend to eat more when the lights are low? Do they tend to eat more when the lights are low, people? Uh, low. Yeah, do, do they tend to eat more when the lights are low, people? <laughs> yes, yes. And he said, yes, they do. I disagree. You play the game beautifully. Uh, people tend to eat less and more slowly in dim lighting. Uh, it is no with another oh, circle. I... All right, not in... Land. All righty, Paul, true or false, scientists say that a small child will believe the story that the stork brought him easier than he will how it really happened. What do you mean, really happened? <laughs> <laughs> Is that true, that he'll believe the story of the stork easier than the, the, the true story? If a parent tells him, the true story or the stork, he'll go, he'll take the stork story? Well, I can only go by, I, I was told the stork story and I believed it and uh, I thought it was charming. <laughs> it's, it's true. Oh, I disagree. It's true. Put an X there. Interesting. Major. Go right ahead. Paul in. Uh, Paul. Uh, Pope Paul. Paul. <laughs> Pope Paul VI recently stated that if women take it too far, it can pose a threat to their spiritual and moral integrity. Take what too far? A bus with reclining seats. <laughs> <laughs> if women take it too far, it can pose a threat to their spiritual and moral integrity. Take what too far? Uh, I would say I don't. I would say loose living. Loose living. I agree. Nope. Women's lib. Women's lib. Put an X there. Major, a break. You are a gorilla's worst enemy. What are you? A discount furrier. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
What would be the biggest enemy of a gorilla? I probably man. Man. I agree. His only real enemy is man. Yes, uh, with a circle. Major? I'll go to Sue Sandler. True or false, the United States Department of Agriculture has finally managed to develop a mini pig. I hear you can kick him a mile. <laughs> uh, as a football. Uh, uh, a mini pig. Yeah, I don't they've know developed they... a mini pig. I don't know why they'd want a mini pig. I mean, because you grow them for food. Uh, mini pig. Uh, I'll say true. He said, yes, they've developed a mini pig. I'll agree. I'll tell you why. For research, mainly, it's very small and uh, docile. You know, their, their skin is very similar to humans. They are very akin in many respects. With a circle, Tom, your turn. Vincent. You have several ways to play this. How are you going to play? Holland. Okay, for a tie game, $250. What well-known space-age word, space-age word, comes from the Latin for little chest? Joni. <laughs> space-age word comes from the Latin for little chest. Well, I'll just go with, you know, the first one that comes to mind, orbit. Orbit. I'll disagree. A capsule. Yes, we have a tie game. That's nice. <laughs> Why did Robinson Crusoe call his island companion Friday? Because Thursday was his day off. <laughs> <laughs> um, Why did he call him Friday? Why did Robinson Crusoe call his island companion Friday? I will... Boy, I don't remember for sure, but I would say that that's when they met. Was that's when they met on that day. I'll agree. That's right. You have the X. Okay, Jody. Oh, according to the new book of knowledge, the most important use of leather is for what? <laughs> to hold animals together. <laughs> 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 uh, what is the the most important use of leather? Gee, I I would say today it it would be clothing. A little more specific. A little more specific. Leather. Uh, I uh, upholstery. Upholstery. Lee? I disagree. Uh, shoes, Paul. We were in the right. Yes, we had to be uh, shoes. You were right with uh, uh, with clothing, but we needed shoes. You have the circle, and Ken, it's your turn. Vince. Paul, what does the name Jose Iturbi remind you of? How hard it is to get good help these days. <laughs> <laughs> Jose Iturbi, what does that remind you of, the name Jose Iturbi? It reminds me of Ampero Iturbi, his sister, a pianist. Piano. I agree. Great I agree. concert pianist. Right, you have the circle. Can you turn? I'm terribly sorry. Paul Lynch, sure. Paul, true or false. During the recent holidays, Rosemarie, our own Rosemarie, entertained on a cruise ship. Entertainment. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Not according to the reviews. <laughs> anyway, she thought it was a trip ship. <laughs> Or I should have said tramp steamer. <laughs> oh! Daryl! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, yes, she did. She said she had the greatest time, she told us the other night. I'm going to disagree again. Oh, yeah, she entertained. She got a new act, and it's terrific. I mean, it's really terrific. And we're very proud of you. So we put an X there, and Ken, it's your turn. Um... Paul in. Paul, true or false, women smokers in Uganda traditionally put the lit end of the cigarette into their mouths. Don't tell me what they do with their chewing gum. <laughs> Is that true or false? The women put the lit end in their mouths in Uganda. 
Uh, yeah, I think Ugandans do that. Lee? I'll agree. Uh, the men smoke just the way we do, but the women do that. You've got two <laughs> circles. Can your turn. True or false? Kate Smith. Kate Smith is a Texas Ranger. But I'll always remember her as a big singing star. <laughs> Kate Smith. Is she a Texas Ranger? Well, I know she was, you know, that baseball team that made her an honorary member, I think. Uh, yes, she is. I don't agree. An honorary member of the Texas Rangers. Okay, <laughs> we're the next uh, book. Still more answers. Can a moose remember anything? Just enough to have more moose. <laughs> <laughs> You say that a moose can remember something? <laughs> or is it mooses? I don't know why they didn't get it. What? <laughs> what? You say they can't remember. I didn't, I didn't know. I was nodding my head. I was saying, what is the question? Oh, uh, according to the book, still more answers. Can a moose remember anything, yes or no? Oh, yes. I'll agree. Definitely every kind of creature on Earth can remember and forget. All right, you turn, Martha. Paul, well, can a rock, an ordinary rock, can a rock be female? can after 30 years of marriage. <laughs> Let's see, can a rock be female? Yes, yes, they do have genders. I'll agree. Rocks are neuter. No, unless you get hit by one. <laughs> yes. Put another uh, circle there. We have a commercial. Paul Lawrence Welk recently admitted that he loves it, but his audience doesn't like it. What is it? About pigs, knuckles, and sauerkraut. <laughs> he like he loves it. His audience doesn't like it. What is it? Uh, I, I bet he likes the modern sound. The modern sound doesn't. I'll disagree. I'll need a ruling on that. He says the modern sound, which he's we have jazz here, yeah. but we can't say modern sound, which is his favorite type of music, jazz. We can't accept modern sound. Very good with the next Martha, your turn. Boys wore high heels to help them do one specific thing. What? <laughs> oh my god. Cowboys. Dare you. What? <laughs> Cowboys wore high heels to help them do one specific thing. What? I'd say get on the horse. Get on the horse. I'll disagree. No, just ride the horse. That anchored them in the stirrups. Not to get on. Ride with another X. Martha, your turn. Harvest. Star, dear. Good luck, uh, Paul. Paul. Nancy Sinatra says that her year-and-a-half-old daughter, Angela, is already doing something that Grandpa Frank Sinatra is famous for. What? Oh, um, she threw a diaper at a reporter. <laughs> <laughs> Her year and a half old daughter, Angela, Frank's granddaughter, is already doing something that Grandpa Frank is famous for. What? Well, I would have to be singing. Singing. I agree. Sure. Good start with a circle. John, your turn. Uh, Paul Lind. Paul, according to the old song, here we are out of cigarettes, holding hands and yawning. Who are we? Roy and Dale. <laughs> Good old Roy and Dale. To, uh, two sleepy people. Two sleepy Too people. To fall asleep. I agree. By dawn's early light. Right. You've got the circle. John? Um, Paul. Lee. Paul. Uh, Ronald Reagan was placed on top of the list of 1975's 10 best. What? 67 year old brunettes. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Is Ronald Reagan 67? Yes. Is he 67? He looks terrific. Yes, he does. Yeah. But uh, Ronald Reagan was placed on top of the list of uh, 1975's 10 best... Yes, best dressed. Best dressed. I agree. That is true. Yes, you've got the circle, we've got to come up to the word. Paul, modern science can't really explain why, but if you go outside at night, stand on your head and stare at the full moon, you will notice something unusual. What? Yes, in just eight seconds, rain will fill up your nose. <laughs> You stand on your head and stare at the full moon, you will notice something unusual. What? Full moon. Mm-hmm. 
I wouldn't go out when it's full. Um, let's see. I've noticed something unusual. About the full moon. Um, that it's not real. Um, I was going to say that it's not really quite round. That it's not really quite round. I disagree. No, it will look only about half as big as usual if you stand on your head and look at it. Oh, they can't explain why. Okay, well, the next, and Pat, it is your turn. <laughs> the game. Good oh, luck. Man. Paul, Eddie Fisher. Eddie Fisher says that he hasn't had one for eight years. But he's looking for what? Oh, an accompanist who takes master charge. <laughs> Eddie hasn't had one for eight years, but he's looking one what? Sure. I, uh, see, I guess it must be eight years already. I'd say a wife. A wife. <laughs> I agree. A wife. Yeah, that's right. Very good. Look at that. Thank you. Back. I'll end for the block. Paul, true or false, if you turn on a certain television station in Manhattan, a woman will walk up and put her lips on the screen, and you can kiss her. I like Barbara Walters better when she does interviews. <laughs> uh, but can you do that in New York, in Manhattan? Oh, I'll bet. So. I bet you can. He says you can. I'm going to have to disagree. Yeah, you know, it's on cable TV. There's some wild things going on. In fact, uh, it doesn't stop with that, by the way. I've heard all these stories. You can't put an X there. Greg, you'll have to that yourself. Paul Lynn, please. Uh, Paul, this is for $250. According to Hugh Hefner, is inflation a big problem in the Playboy empire? Inflation. Inflation? <laughs> Did you see Miss February? <laughs> uh, well, I, I hear he's in great financial trouble. At least the magazine is. Uh, so I would say indirectly, yes, it's true. I'll agree. Yes, absolutely. And you've got yourself $250. A great comeback, right? Paul. The average American gains 3.7 pounds after he does something. Does what? Buying dentures from a drugstore. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, George. <laughs> uh, what? I, I know what it is. What? It, and I wish I could quit, but uh, it's smoking. Smoking. I agree. I've gained 10, and it's been hard to lose, I'll tell you, but it's worth it. Anyway, it's smoking. Right. Okay, you've got the X, and here's what you're telling. Lynn, please. Uh, Paul, Ann Landers has written a booklet titled, How to Tell the Difference Between Love and what? A kidney infection. <laughs> <laughs> Ann Landers has written a booklet titled How to Tell the Difference Between Love and... Uh, sex. Sex. I agree. That's right. Hey, very good. Two X's on the board. Judith? I think... Paul? Sir Alexander Fleming, Ernest B. Chain, and Sir Howard W. Florey were awarded the Nobel Prize in 1945 for discovering something which has made millions, millions of people around the world feel better. What did they discover? Uh, Chinese underwear. <laughs> Will you explain that to me later, no, Paul? <laughs> but Sir Alexander Fleming, Ernest B. Chain, and Sir Howard W. Florey were awarded the Nobel Prize in 1945 for discovering something which has made millions of people around the world feel better. What did they discover? The aspirin. The aspirin. I disagree. Uh, 1945, no, the penicillin. Penicillin. You've got the X. All right, Judith, it's your turn. All righty. Paul, President Johnson had a personal butler in the White House. So did Presidents Kennedy and Nixon. Does Gerald Ford also have a butler? Yes, he doubles as Secretary of Agriculture. <laughs> Poor Mr. Butts. But does the Gerald Ford have a butler, President Ford? He's in such good shape, he probably serves himself. Uh, we've always heard what good... Uh, a butler. I, uh, I just don't get that image with him. I don't think he, he has a no. butler. I agree. 
He decided it was a needless luxury. No, good for you, President Ford. Put a circle there. CJ. Oh, that's why I was rushing everybody through. This, by the way, would be worth $50 to Allison and a total of $200 in cash. That is our buzzer, meaning time is up. But you did uh, choose a star. We can't finish the question. We all know, Paul, about the destruction caused by forest fires. But does anything good ever come out of a forest fire? Ever had roast venison? <laughs> conservationists out there just fell right off their chairs. And we have a retired fire captain here. Oh. Does anything good ever come out of a forest fire? Anything good come out of a forest fire? Yes or no? Boy, uh... 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 uh it's such a ridiculous question. I Obviously, the answer is no, but probably the answer is yes. So? Uh... Everything good come out of a forest fire. I can't believe it. I will say... No. I disagree. They often destroy harmful insects. Uh, oh, well, how ridiculous. That's fine. That's, That's a fact. Put a circle there. And now we're going to add up the score. gorgeous trees. Haul in. Hi, Paul. Everything okay? Uh-huh. All righty. <laughs> According to Coronet, Coronet, do most men feel uneasy when with a woman who has an extremely large bust? In other words, do most men feel uneasy when they're around women with extremely large busts <laughs> guess they run for cover <laughs> <laughs> I I think it's hard to talk it's hard to look at their eyes uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's hard to do anything yes I think they are he said yes they're uncomfortable uncomfortable most men with uh, women. I disagree yeah they are most men become upset and scared uh, I don't know why. We can't uh, put an X there, Randy. You'll have to run that yourself. Paul in. All righty. For $250, does Mark Spitz believe swimming in the nude helps you go faster? Well, it's easier to stare. I, uh... <laughs> I think, uh, I think any additional garment or anything would be, uh, you know, cause resistance. Of I course. said yes. I think it would be faster. I agree. No. In fact, he says swimming suits actually improve freedom of movement. I think they shave their arms and things, but not the, no, they don't go nude. We put a circle there. You're back at it, Norma. All righty. Uh, according to the old song, I want to be happy, but I can't be happy until what? Till Johnny comes marching home again. The way. <laughs> I want to be happy, but I can't be happy until. What? You're, you're happy too. I'll agree. Yeah, I make you happy too. Very good. It's your turn, Nona. Dave Land. Paul? President George Washington once said, quote, I would rather be in my grave than in what? Grant's tomb. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather be in my grave than in, in the what? Uh, I don't know. I'll just try to make some kind of sense. I'll say uh, most presidents truly hate war. I'll say I'd rather be in my grave than be in, in war. In war. I disagree. No, I'd rather be in my grave than be president. Isn't that interesting? Oh, that too. Yeah, okay, with a circle. Randy? I'll go for Paul Lynn. I don't blame you. Paul, according to the World Book, what's the most important single thing you should do to take care of your skin? <laughs> don't tell Jack Palance that you hate his dog commercials. <laughs> <laughs> the most important thing to do to take care of your skin. Jay, what? The most important thing, keep it clean. Keep it clean. That's an erase. I'm going to disagree. Yeah, you keep it clean. All righty. Put an X there. A break for you, Pat. John Dick. Oh. Speaking of matrimony, Eddie Fisher <laughs> recently said, marriage kills love. Marriage kills love. And love kills what? 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie
Eddie Fisher recently said marriage kills love and love kills... Kills Taylor. <laughs> marriage kills love and, uh -huh. love and love kills... Marriage. Marriage. Ah, oh, wonderful. <laughs> Ships in again. <laughs> Well, I tell you what that is, that is our buzzer, ladies and gentlemen, and it's either worth $50 for Joanne or nothing for Pat. So, marriage kills love and love kills marriage. Joanne? I'll agree. No. <laughs> Friendship. Friendship. Okay, we're going to add up the scores. We have two X's up there for you, Pat. And that means... Oh. The very first, the very first of the Ten Commandments says that you should not have what? <laughs> the very first of the Ten Commandments says that you should not have <laughs> We just lost Ohio, by the way, Paul. Yeah. I said hats. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> hats, right. Um I honor thy father and mother. Bill? Thou shalt not have strange gods before thee. I, I other disagree. gods, right, yes. Thou shalt not have other gods before me. Yes, Bill, you know, you've got the X and read it's your turn. Paul in. All right. Uh, Paul, this is for $500. According to New Dawn magazine, is it uncommon for women to talk to themselves while romancing? I don't even have a bluff. <laughs> It's yes or no, Paul. I mean, uh, is it uncommon? Is it uncommon? <laughs> is it uncommon for women to talk to themselves while romancing? If they're enjoying it, I hope they do. He said, no, it's not uncommon. I agree. Uh, both men and women do it. They say, yeah, sure they do it. Okay, you've got the X five hundred dollars. Go for it. According to the Pittsburgh Press, Kate Smith did something on her twenty third birthday that had a lasting effect on her life in show business. What did she do? Well, good American that she is. Um, she ate 412 apple pies. <laughs> what did uh, Kate Smith do on her 23rd birthday that had a lasting effect on her life in show business? Uh, I think she probably recorded her favorite, favorite song, uh, you know, uh, what was that? <laughs> well, you say her favorite song, When the Moon Comes Over the Mountain? That's right. Yes. yes. Um, I think she sang. Uh, uh, do you agree or disagree? I agree. No. She made her debut on radio, May 1st, 1931. Yes, her debut. Now, let me explain. It's a secret square up there. It's worth $5,500. The secret square is not Paul Lind. Are you a gambling man? Uh... I'll take, I'll take Paul Lynn. All right. For $250, for Paul. Do we get any heat from stars? Do we get any heat from stars? You will if I have to share my dressing room again. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you sharing it with, Paul? Big Bird and Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> right, you did, yes. I think it's so many miles away. You mean, as human beings, do we get any heat yeah, from stars? Yeah, any heat from stars. From the stars. Do we get... I don't think so. This is no. I disagree. Uh, we don't get much, but a little. Yes, X gets the square, 250 bucks. Ron Snyder. Who is the secret square? Clock. <laughs> 